All right, Bang Bang, today is Monday, it is March 7th. Welcome to the Dog Walk, presented by Barstool Sports. It's Snake Draft Monday. We have a uh, second-time guest. Uh, he actually won his first appearance, long awaited to return. I think it's been over a year. Uh, Ryan Whitney, <laughs> welcome back to the show. You four cowards <laughs> dodging me, have been dodging me at every turn, and then all of a sudden you group together and start sending out tweets that I've been looking to stay away from you, which is patently false. I came on this show one time. I had actually asked to be on it quite a while. You dodged me. I get on. I dominate it. It had to be one of the top three guest performances of all time. It was a shit kicking with, with Emer. What was the guy who I got at the end? I don't even remember. Zlatan. The player. Zlatan. 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 <laughs> Unreal pick by the at the fifth round. So I'm looking forward to this. And I got that overgrown hairy midget Dave sitting there, probably looking to chirp me. But I'm gonna get ahead of the game because you're a complete joke of a human. And without the three guys sitting next to you, you'd be an absolute nobody, which you kind of are anyways. I'll save my comments for the for the draft. <laughs> okay, you will. Um, I mean, I did I did text you and you didn't respond. That's a fact. That's like douchebag move number one by Ryan Whitney today. Okay, I have to admit something. <laughs> yeah. When we talk about douchebag moves, asshole moves, however we're gonna word it, when you say that that's a move that I do, that is, and the problem with my list. I think I've done all these things. <laughs> it's just that, yeah. Looking in the yeah. mirror. Yeah. It yeah. makes Regularly, perfect sense. I'm like, oh my God, I'm an ass. I'm a douchebag. That's why they brought me in for this draft. <laughs> <laughs> we figured it'd be right up your alley. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So the topic is douchebag moves. Uh, I think douchebag is kind of up to your interpretation as well. Like, of course, like asshole is what really jumps off the page. But I think there's like... Like, like, you know, hipsters are kind of douchebag. You know what I mean? So there's, like, that aspect, too. So there's like a little bit of, run, you know, runway on both sides. Yeah, I kind of took it as, um, w I, my list is basically made up of things that w if someone were to do them or when people do them, you're like, what a prick. Just that's an asshole move. So I know there's probably a million different ways you can all go with this. I'm kind of directly into terms of, uh, like, things that you can do to be a prick or to be called an asshole or a douchebag. So... I mean, I don't know where you guys are going, but I know I'm ready. All right, that's good. Dave, you're ready? Dave asked me 10 minutes before what the topic was, so I don't know if he's ready, to be honest. I, what do you mean I'm not ready? This is my topic. This is your topic. You're right. But I, I, I didn't know you just have them off the cuff. I didn't I've been thinking. thinking about this one forever, Ed. Probably. I got so many gripes with douchebags in my life. <laughs> when uh, when that, was the last time you won a snake draft, Dave? Uh, I went uh, – I won three of four, like, in January, what? yeah, before he had a little hot streak. Yeah. I had a hot streak. Mm -hmm. I got hot. Wow, I was seeing I beach like balls get, at the like dish. You get a lot of love on Twitter. I feel like people are getting in your corner, but I'm gonna try to change that. It, it's I, I would say I am a polarizing figure in the Twitter. <laughs> that's sphere. a good thing online, though. In our game, in our content game, I think that's what you want. They're either bitching about me or sucking me off, Ryan. <laughs> it's one or the other. There's no like indifference about me. Uh, like yesterday, I uh, I was re I was it was the uh, snake or this might have been Monday, whenever it was. Um, I was reading the YouTube comments on the dog walk snake draft, and it was just nonstop. Either people like all in my corner or telling me I should be fired. So Dave's a national well, you know treasure what, you know versus what, get this fucking guy out yeah. of here. The fact that you sit there and read the YouTube comments shows. <laughs> yeah, you give it, <laughs> Dad. You give it. Everybody gives a scroll down here and there, just as. <laughs> Gather some market research and see what they like. Everybody doesn't. I mean, it's our message board guy. It's everybody <laughs> <He> does. <laughs> and if you say you don't, you're just lying. You're a lion. All right, Dave. Whatever you say, whatever makes you sleep at night, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, congrats to Chief. He won the potato fun. draft. Thank you. There's a lot of allegations that uh, Terry Tots. There's no allegations. Uh, There's no Tots. allegations. Well, I, He's I trying haven't to listened to Potato Draft. I actually haven't listened to the past like month. I've been away and busy. So what happened in Potato <laughs> Draft, Chief? Back. I know you could. something happened. I can sense it. I, I won convincingly, like going away, like doubled the field. Man, is that your first food draft win? Uh, that would be interesting to find out. It's got to be. If someone could find that stat. It might be, be but I think this proves that all my previous food drafts were also probably deserving of wins. How do you? What a because well, I, mean, I feel like statement. people are like, oh, burrata. Like we don't know. We just don't know what it is. Like I know what Who I'm doing. Know what you is. didn't. Burrata. You didn't know what it was back then. <laughs> I'd never, ooh, never heard of it. 
I don't know if that's true. Go back we and listen. Think, Two you years. Think Dave knows what barata is. He's Dude, claiming he's like now. Back potatoes. then, he's he a didn't. Piece of trash. <laughs> I like trash food. What's wrong with fucking chicken tenders? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. This guy didn't know what barata is. Well, that's what I'm it's saying. Like asking like, him if he knows what like a symphony is in music. He's a scumbag. He's our uh, what do you a mean? symphony. He's, he's a, our, what is a symphony? I, I explain a symphony. To me. I'll I'll explain it to Ed in his ear. You can explain it to the people, and I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Uh, uh, an orchestra. That you no <laughs> wrong. <laughs> All right. At least I know what barata cheese is, though. <laughs> I, okay, What's well, a if, symphony if, then? If a symphony is like a, a a conglomeration of different instruments all composing the same sound or different sounds to make a, a quality sound. Symphony definition: an elaborate musical composition for a full orchestra, typically in four movements at least. I said orchestra. Yes, yeah, Dave defined an orchestra. A symphony is not that. Yeah, he. I, mean, I think you both. An orchestra is is the musicians together. In the a symphony sense, you is guys what they compose. Combined. That's that's what I just said. No, but you go to the symphony is like the is like the show. It's the product. Yeah, yeah, the orchestra is the band. You said it's. Well, the I didn't use the word orchestra. orchestra. I didn't use guy, the Dave. word. Orchestra. I know you defined <laughs> orchestra. No, I didn't. You, you didn't defined listen. it. You didn't listen to what but I said. But the definition you gave applies to orchestra. It doesn't apply to symphony. I said it's a conglomeration of sounds. <laughs> Are you from following instruments. us? We're all idiots. Is the, uh, whatever. Yeah, we're not we're talking about. I think they both said one of technically right when it came to that definition. Um, all right, favorite? then we're, we're off to the races here. So let's let's do oh, order. Yeah. Let's do order, Whitney. Um, one through five behind intern Lance's back. What number is it? Three. No. Uh, Carl. One. No. Two. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I'll take the third spot. I think that's a good pick for this draft. One through four. That's where I was. That's, that's the pick I wanted was number three. Was it? One, one through four, White Sox, Dave. I'll go with three. No. Four. Yeah. I'll take the fourth spot. Uh, one through three, Whitney. You take three? Two. No. Carl. One. Yes. I'll take the first pick. All right. One or two, uh, White Sox, Dave. Two. Yeah. Uh, you I'll want, take fifth. You'll take fifth. All right, Whitney, you're second. All right. All right, so. Carl's got first? Yep, Carl, right. Whitney, Chief, Eddie, White Sox, Dave. Uh, before we get going here, I do want to talk about Roman, White Sox, Dave, your favorite ad read of all of them. Um, everybody on this show loves the swipes, though, so. Uh, don't be thinking about douchebag moves when you're fucking. Make sure you're using these clinically proven ways to last longer in bed. These Roman swipes, they're effective, they're easy to use, and they're fast acting, but they don't require a prescription. Roman can ship to you in discreet, unmarked packaging, and each swipe packet is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. Uh, they're super easy to use. Just take the swipe out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry. You're good to go. That's it. Dave, you have one in your wallet? Uh, I lost it in the move, Ed. You lost it in the move? I think so. All right, we're going to need Roman to send some more over. Yeah, that, well... I, I don't you, of need course, them to didn't lose it getting laid, you loser. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't need Roman wit. Oh, if oh I, good, if good I, if I, good I, good good fucking, <laughs> if I hey, wanted to you, read, you dummy. Hey, wit. Oh, my God. I love Dave. Roman. When, oh, my when God. I, are we listening to this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Says, Dave, just, uh, just, hey, watch your just admit it, man. That was tough. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was uh, tough. Uh, it's all right, dude. Don't don't try and bounce back from this one. You're just fine. I, I am taking our <laughs> our sponsor. Our, I'm taking our sponsor into account, and I'm leaving it up to the floor if we want to delete that because I think we should. We're gonna keep it. I do not I think that one's getting deleted because everyone knows, and I can even help Eddie out. Roman is the best in the business at keeping your dick hard and exactly. making sure you last long in bed. And I'll pick Ed, it up for Dave. I got mine. Interrupt. Oh, how oh, discreet. Look at, Ed. Look at I got fucking mine. Ed. You see Ed coming down the street, how ladies. How did you even find that without a Is that day? clinically proven? Is that clinically, clinically proven? proven? It's beautiful. It's great. The packaging. Um, mm. Sad day for the White Sox Dave fans. Sad day. Well, send the ladies over to Ed because he's packing We're Roman. Packing he's ready Roman. to go. His fucking dick's rock solid. Off haircut, We're and he's carrying around the Romans. He knows what's up. We got the bat. We're ready. <laughs> Bam Bam's ready, baby. Uh, go to getroman.com slash dog walk to get your first month of swipes for just $5 when you choose a monthly plan. That's getroman.com slash dog walk. Uh, be smart. Don't be like Dave. Um, okay. The douchebag moves draft. Carl, you are up. All right. Uh, I was confident taking first overall. I came in here. I was hoping I'd get to pick first overall. I understand why. You'd want to pick later in the draft. You kind of want to see things play out. But to me, 
I think douchebag moves. I think there's something you see it. You're just like, oh my god, that guy's such a douchebag. And it's uh, it's getting a tribal tattoo or like a tribal, some prominently displayed, uh, if it's a shoulder or something. But it's like nondescript at all. Whether it's, um, I'm trying to think, not necessarily like barbed wire, but like the, you know what I'm the talking Asian about. letters the that tribal, they don't know the what tribal it means. tattoo. Yeah, it's just, I mean, that's all you need to say. Okay, right. Yeah, well, I mean, I would argue that it's almost worse if you get the barbed wire around the bicep, right? We don't talk shit about it, that. But I mean, it's yeah. oh, somebody has that in there. <laughs> no, uh, right here. Yeah, Brian, Brian, Brian Urlacher. Urlacher was like the guy. <laughs> yeah, and those aren't as prevalent. Like, I think that's more of just yeah. like that's I know like Urlacher had it, <laughs> and I know Pam Anderson had it too, right? She, and yeah. she had a movie called Barbed Wire. Did she? Did yeah, she, she had a movie great. called Barbed Wire. Nineteen ninety-six. Right after tits sex tape great. got yes. released. Yes, Hooters were. Oh, I, didn't know I will that. say though, Carl, like a lot of those Samoan guys, they look pretty badass. Yeah, there. that's there's a fine line. Yeah, you can, yeah no, you can I'm pull sure. It off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. I I know that there are like the those guys can pull it off, but we're not talking about those guys. We're talking about okay. douchebags, and I'm talking about right. a tribal tattoo. If any one of us, including Whitney and the producers and social media guys, got a tribal tattoo, that would be the biggest douchebag move ever. <laughs> yeah, like that's I don't know. That's kind I of would, my, I'm my not point a of reference. Guy. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. There's guys like uh, we're learning. We'll get to that later. No, I, I do agree with you because that's what we're thinking of. Like guys like us to get it, but it's like I don't know. Lately, like now I think of a tribal. I think of like the Rocks, which is fucking like he's the perfect guy to have. He's that, Samoan you know? or whatever, right? So yeah, is yeah, he? yeah. I think he's I, he's I Polynesian I island something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't know that. Dwayne uh, the Rock Johnson from Miami is a Polynesian dude of descent. I want to mm. say. I mean, he he, okay. he can pull he does it off. Are you talking? Hell, I know yeah. he's he was in Moana, right? He was in Moana. Maybe that's. that's a fact. But I mean, he's he's tan as hell and he's yoked. So I he assumed. Can pull it off fine. I assumed he was Cuban because he was from my. That okay. Uh, yeah, he's he born to some his, his old mother. And his name's Dwayne Johnson. What, what Polynesian island is Dwayne Johnson? From? He was born in San Francisco to a Samoan mother and a black Nova Scotian father. There you, oh, go. there you go. Black yeah. guy from Nova uh -huh. Scotia. Wow. Yeah. So he's so the Viking mother blood? side of the family. He's that's that's hey, you can have the tribal t tattoos and look badass with those. Yeah. Right. But uh, like Lofi like, Tatupa, was that the guy's name in the NFL? Didn't he have those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of those. Yeah, I'm still standing. I, I mean, I like the yeah. pick. I don't know if it's first overall for me, but I like the pick. You're a clown if you're just like a normal, regular old guy with an enormous tribal tattoo. Do you got any tats with? <laughs> no, I, I just said I am not a tattoo guy, and I'm so happy that I never, never went through with like when everyone, my buddies growing up around Boston area were 15, 16, guys started getting. The shamrock with the hockey sticks through yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And that is just a tough look nowadays when you're 39 years old. So oh, I'm yeah. glad I never never fell through. But I don't have the body to rock tattoos. Yeah. yeah you're a little doughy. Soft. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, all right. The tribal tattoo goes number one overall. Uh, Whitney, you're up. Oh, for my top pick, I'm just back and forth between two two different ones. Fuck. That's why I wanted... <sighs> All right. All right. I'm going to go with because recently the Whitney family, we were lucky enough to uh, have a dog enter our life. Yoshi is our new dog. And I've learned quickly throughout the ways and in, in the time of not even having a dog and while having a dog. If you take your dog for a walk and he takes a steaming dump on the side of the road or in the grass Fuck. and you don't pick it up. You're one of the biggest pieces of shit going. That was my number one pick. I was an absolute douchebag asshole move. And I think for this draft to bring a dog and have a dump laying on the sidewalk and to walk away, you got to be a special type of scumbag. And you've done it. I've done no, it. no, 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 no. So you take no, your no, dog no, no, no. for a walk and you got the little holder thing. I, and all of a sudden you're a fucking half mile from your house. He takes a shit. You look in that holder thing. There's no plastic bag. You look around. And that's all you can do. Well, I, we, my dog shits like right in front of the, uh, the house or in the backyard. But I mean, I, I've seen a million people walk their dog with just a little bag and then you pick it up, fold it, carry it and you finish your walk. I mean, that's why you have a dog. You can't just put this shit everywhere. No, I agree. I agree. That's what do you think of White Sox Dave admitting that he's done it before? Though? I mean, it, I'm not going to walk back. A fuck. At all. <laughs> hey, you said before the show started that you've pulled all these moves. Uh, I, if I said all of them, I misspoke because I should have said a high majority of them. 
leaving my dog shit on the sidewalk or somebody else's grass is not one of them I have I have uh I'd like to Done. hook you up to a poly on this. I don't want to do it. I know it's Bring a, a poly. Bag. Bring it down to Florida and polygraph me. <laughs> I would love to because I and everybody in this room, whether you admit it or not, and I mm. will not believe you, has been on a walk with their dog, has unfortunately, like maybe you have one bag and he takes a second shit. It happens. And you you just look around and you fucking walk away. Chief. So you're so confusing. You fucking said it was your first overall pick. Yeah. And now you're like defending it. What I'm not defending it. I it's a fucking awful move, but there, sometimes it's out of like it just shot clock. There's way too much shit around the neighborhood for it to just be people forgot. So like people are doing it intentionally. Oh, oh, yeah, people so are doing I know, it. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, big yeah. time. Yeah. So and I'll say this. I'm sorry. I've only had the dog for a month, so we got time for me to pull this move. <laughs> you yeah. had the dog for it'll, a it'll month. Happen. For it'll a happen. month, and that's you're right. standing there pointing that's fingers right. at a Give guy who's grown up in a house of dogs. Come on! I've never not had a dog, Crazy. as far as I'm aware. <laughs> and well, Damn. a few years in Chicago, but it's, okay. it's unfortunately it just happens. But if it's intentional, you're a fucking. You ever Barstool confessions? Have you guys done this? All right, it's, I I have the it's the time with the United States Soccer House where I was Scotty took two dumps on a walk and I only had one bag, but I go to cross the street because there's a garbage can and I was just gonna get like a oh bag yeah, I remember out. this story yeah and so this guy comes out the U.S. Soccer Federation wit it's it's in my old neighborhood it's like this big old mansion that they converted to house like the men's team the women's team the leadership and all the stuff it's right over by Soldier Field so we're walking by maintenance guy comes out it's this polish guy just fucking screaming at the top of his lungs and he's like oh, fuck poop 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 <laughs> and he's just pointing at the poop i'm all embarrassed and stuff i'm rifling yeah. through a fucking trash can on the other side and my temper just gets the best and i just start now i'm yelling at this guy like you think i'd leave my dog shit here and the guy's <laughs> like you just fucking did leave your dog shit here then the fucking guys come out of the u.s soccer house there's people standing outside staring at this confrontation and a woman is like is everything gonna be okay and i was like not until we start winning some fucking soccer games around here because we had I, just we were not in the world cup and i just created this massive scene in the south loop and i was like i gotta i gotta get home that house office is way too nice for the results that they've gotten it's, see it's, it's I, know, like, I know exactly it's, what it's, it's, it's too, a yeah. spectacular old like probably 150 year old place a soccer team just moved in they didn't earn it that's like more marshall fields used to live not that oh, house, really? but that's the, guy, the fucking okay, neighborhood. That's the guy. Okay. Anyways, I should have kept my cool, but I didn't have two bags. I had one. You ever done the thing where you pick it up with leaves? Because I've done that. I've if if I can if there's any possibility. Classy move. Thank you. Uh, where Thank you. I can pick up the guy. dog shit, yeah. like even open a dumpster and maybe there's like a plastic grocery store bag. I will do that, but sometimes it's without. It's you don't have a choice, and I'm not gonna walk back. I'm sorry for a ten minute walk to go pick up the dog shit. I'm just not. But White if Sox it's Steve, intentional, you want to take this time to admit that you've probably like ate your dog shit at once. I've never <laughs> eaten my dog shit. No. Okay. What kind of dog is Yoshi with? Uh, he's like a burn a doodle type. Like his dad was a burn a doodle. The mom was something, but he's a doodle and he doesn't shed. I'll send you guys a picture. He's beautiful. Oh, nice. Great. How old is he? Puppy. Shelter. Uh, yeah, he's uh, four months old. Wow. I oh, love nice. him. No, four, sorry. He's four weeks, I think. I don't know. He's probably yeah. four months. They Sounds probably four months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, he's six, 16 weeks, four months. Four Sounds months. like a beautiful dog. Make sure you send him to me. I, I'd like to see. I, I will. Yeah. Thanks, Ed's thanks a huge you. dog guy. Okay. okay. But yes, yeah, so if, if you just intentionally leave your dog shit on the sidewalk, you're a fucking human scum, and I hate you. <laughs> I hope you die. Uh, I hope you die a thousand damn. deaths. <laughs> okay. Not picking up dog shit. If if someone Chief, listen, what do you got? What do you got, Chief? Yeah, you haven't answered. I know it's happened to you. Yeah, it's happened. <laughs> Thank you. But I would say, but I have oftentimes done the the leaf thing too. Yeah, like I've had things where it's like I swear, like it falls out of my pocket, and I'm like, fuck. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not your fault. Like yeah. it's just outside leave your it. control. Okay. And if someone we're sending out the hit, if someone gets it on video or something, Dave walking his dog and not picking up his dog shit, we'll give you free pick Whitney for how long? Whit? How long could we give people pink Whitney for? I'll, I'll, if you get a video of him actually doing this, I'll send you five grand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a bounty on me now. <laughs> the problem is he's gonna end up doing it on purpose and splitting the twenty. Splitting the <laughs> yeah. No shit. Him. I know this. I know this guy. <laughs> no shit. That's my fucking exactly mortgage it. payment now. That's exactly uh, it. That's a free month of living. <laughs> um, all right, not picking up dog shit is the pick. It's an uh, awesome, awesome. Chief, you're up. Yeah, awesome that was pick. gonna be my number one pick. So I guess I'll just go number two. Just being the, like a bad tipper. Like if you don't like adequately take care of 
uh, the, the the staff when you're when you're out somewhere. If you're just if you're a cheapskate in general, but especially with them where they rely on the tips, even if they do a bad job, you have to be like the worst yep. person ever for me to be like. <sighs> not gonna like i'm gonna cut you down to 20 percent. that's exactly how i am 20 yeah. percent for me is like you fucked up you're right yeah but if you if you like walk out on it or you get like i dated a girl in college who someone like left her one uh, like a one penny tip and was like you're worth oh, like, that's this is what you're worth shit, like yeah. it's always stuck out in my i mind. i would have steam coming out of my ears. Yeah. and um so yeah being a bad tipper uh, I think it's like one of the worst things you can do. Uh, that was that was right up there for me. And quickly, I was actually thinking about this and writing stuff down. I texted my buddy who's he's a restaurant owner and I asked him, like, what is the deal with like if your service is that bad? Like, are there really people who don't tip? He said, oh, yeah, there are. And he said, if you're ever going to do it, which he said you never should. But at least go to the manager of the bar or the restaurant and tell them what happened and like why you're not because to straight up leave no tip or leave like a penny like you're saying and walk out is is beyond scumbag that was right top of my list as well Chief. yeah uh the penny thing is that's even worse than no yeah. Tip. yeah yeah that's just a w- w- it was a penny with like a note on the receipt oh really yeah oh well, that guy yeah. was fucking pissed yeah. douchebag yeah. she was a nice um, girl so I'm up. Mine's actually in the same vein. I'm actually happy you didn't do this because I think this is way more douchebag. But uh, just being rude to minimum wage employees, like the people who go to like Chick Fil A or whatever, and you're just a fucking asshole to someone who's busting their ass making whatever they're making. Like I just think that's the absolute worst. Just being rude to wait staff. Like you're just a douchebag if you can't just be. You know. How's set. this gonna show on the graph? So you're drafting this? What do you mean? This is the fourth overall pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being it's rude, very similar so. to what Chief just picked. He picked bad tippers. Yeah, he literally yeah, yeah. said bad tippers. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so he's mad at the customer. Well, who now, tips. I, now we're just. I, I'm just saying it. It seems or it sounds familiar. I don't know. So it's it's in the same vein. It's under the same. It umbrella. for sure is. Yeah. I know that, but I think there's a difference between being Give, overly giving yeah, rude versus so you giving said a bad Chick-fil-A. tip. Chick-fil-A. Yeah, so yeah. like I'm saying, like being rude to the McDonald's and like being yeah. rude to minimum wage employees, like being a fucking. Over an asshole. Like, uh, what the fuck? You didn't I, make my fries. I, I would say that there's been an all-time high of that the last two years. For sure. Where people, like, pissed about whatever. Because people are so short-staffed and they're right. like, taking yeah, out people these people. Or, their or even the, yeah. the, the Karens being like, they're pissed about the COVID policy, so they're going to take it out on the 16-year-old kid who's like, hey, uh, this is a Chipotle. Please put your mask on. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah like, exactly. like it's not his. Like he was not sitting on the board. Meeting. Exactly, exactly. Have you I, guys? So ever, is this a? Uh, we just the. At risk of being too nuanced here, I feel like we're talking about assholes. Is this an asshole draft or a douchebag draft? It's I okay. There's going to be was a discussion I had with with my buddy about this, who's visiting me. I said, I think it's the same thing. He said he goes, well, that sounds like an asshole. I go, isn't? I think being a douchebag and an asshole is the, the same. Mm-hmm. No. I, I have other douchebag stuff that like, yeah. like I said, in, to me, it's like there is the fucking like hardo dickhead kind of douchebag. And then there's like, oh, that guy like what a douche. Like the, the tribal tattoo. Yeah, guy. Like I, I know what you're that. saying. I understand what you guys are saying, but I think this it can all it can work in both ways. Yeah, it can. For definitely. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Have you guys ever worked in a restaurant? Oh, yeah, I actually uh, quickly. I got hired uh, by the Atlantica in Cohasset, Massachusetts. And um First night there, probably four hours into my shift as a busboy, I walked out of the indoor of the kitchen, which I didn't know was a big deal. Huge deal. Absolutely. Terry Tate linebacker (laughs) blew up some guy, (laughs) waiter, carrying about five trays and crushed him. They went everywhere, fired immediately, got home. My dad goes, what are you doing home? I go, I got gas. (laughs) That's that's a big no-no. Smoke. The chef will fucking snap on you. Smoke them. The executive chef typically, like, they're the boss of the kitchen and that's like the biggest no no you can do but in terms of of just being rude like if you've worked in a restaurant for i'd say a year plus you'll run into a lot of characters and the karen at the restaurant just complaining about the food uh asking for a kid's menu like it's they're the biggest douchebags on the planet yeah I fucking for sure treating restaurant workers yeah. like shit is like the worst yeah. thing you could do it's the worst thing you can do. And I do think that's <laughs> I, I do think it's different than what are you laughing at? 
It's like every now and then if you get into a good rhythm with yeah. Dave, you'll it pair is, it. He gets yeah. like, yeah. yeah, I feel yeah. like he just – but that was like seriously – he felt that from the heart. I know yeah, I did. I worked yeah. in a restaurant for four or five like years. Shit and he was, that was deep down. <laughs> yeah. it's, no, the, there, I wasn't going to yeah. go into it. There was one story. It was I worked at a golf course country club with a, a like an upper scale restaurant in it, in it, and I worked in the restaurant part. And um, there was this one lady – and. Anytime an employee would walk by, she would have a comment. And it got to the point where the rest, rest of the, the dining area noticed how big of a douchebag she was being to the staff. And finally, our manager, who was, who was super cool, I, I stay in touch with her, kind of sort of a little bit still. And this is 12, 14 years later or whatever. She finally just got up and she's like, hey, your, your meal's been taken care of. We're paid for, but we're going to ask you to leave. And she just kicked her the fuck out for being just a condescending bitch. I fucking I'll never forget that oh, damn. that lady. Yeah, she was the absolute worst. It's staying long. So yeah, right, yeah. My pick is treating restaurant workers like shit. Excuse me. Um, White Sox, Dave, you're up. I'm actually glad this one got to me. This would have been, uh, I would have had to wrestle with myself for drafting this or the dog shit. But uh, asking if you know who my father is when you get oh, in trouble. Oh yeah, Dave. Yeah. Wow. That's such a good pick. That is such a good pick. I didn't even have that on pick. my board. That's a great My call. father's great a high-powered attorney. You sure you want to kick me out of this bar, you fucking asshole? You'll hear from him. Like, fuck off, you douchebag. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Would I you mean, ever William William somebody? I, I, I've, <laughs> as a joke, I will. But he's got next to zero power. That's his, he's his dad's his first name is William Whitney. No shit. Your grandfather named his son William Williams? And my grandfather's name was William Williams. I was supposed to be William Herman Williams the third. And yeah, my mom they told saw my you and they're like, this dad dude is power. not continuing our name. With that <laughs> that uh, probably, actually, from, I, I'm pretty sure they, my dad tried for Rex too. So I could have been a Rex. <laughs> Damn. Hey, I actually think you'd be a great Rex. I think I'd be Old a good Rex. Rexy Williams yelling in celebrities' faces outside the White Sox games. Rex up to his old tricks. I, he deserved it. John Cusack can suck my fucking ball sack, Whitney. He's number. He's uh, higher on my shit on my shit list than you are, actually. In fact, I should put you on my shit list. My real oh, shit no. list. Well, what am I gonna do? No, that's that list is. For always, and it's perpetual. <laughs> um, yeah, do you know who Great my dad back, is? Great yeah. pick, Yeah. Do you guys have any? No, dads? I mean, that's a big I'm sure I feel like, Yeah, it's a great pick. I've probably said that a thousand times. No, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Like, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. It, it that's probably goes viral, I would say, like on a college campus, like every once in a while. Yeah. Who was, the, was it the, down in Auburn, that one kid? Like, Ole Miss, I thought. Ole Miss, yeah. Maybe it was like probably Ole Miss because he was dressed like such a fucking douchebag. <laughs> yeah. So if yeah. that got, if that went viral like at college, like, you gotta leave. You gotta leave that. Oh school. yeah, you're like, done. Th that's just you're not coming back from that. It's you tough. know who my dad is? <laughs> yeah, um, just fucking crying about to. Oh, I'll sue you. <laughs> fucking losers. Do you? You're up again, David. Um, and then this one. Uh, this is just something that I fucking hate in general, but not using your directional when you are driving. Fuck you. You never use your direction. Oh, man. After your first pick, I was like, he might win this thing, and you just ruined your chances. <laughs> Dude, are you fucking kidding me? If you don't, you if you call that a douchebag move, like, yes, it's it's like turn on your fucking turn signal, douchebag. You say that in your head all every single time it happens. From the, from the guy who blows stop signs. For I don't fun. blow stop signs for fun. I don't blow stop you signs. You take when when someone else takes the, the right, right away, away. But, you go. But that's a self admitted douchebag move. I know what I'm doing. This is like tell, tell on someone explain to Whitney what Dave does. All right. So when Dave gets to a stop sign and there he is approaching a stop sign, say he's going to north and there's a car coming going west and the car going west is is has, ahead of him has, has the, the right, right away. away. They, the, you go before he them, will just roll the stop of, sign. I will roll like, it. I'll t I'll steal it from them just to see the reaction. Oh, that's the worse than saying, you know who my dad is. That should have been number one. <laughs> but I do it intentionally. Like I, I for, that doesn't matter. It, no, it does matter. I I'm intentionally. If some people are just naturally douchebags and make natural douchebag moves, this is me like getting a laugh with myself because they're always like. Yeah, he's up yeah, and it, spit in your face, but I did it but, intentionally. So but here's okay. the thing: I never, ever, ever, ever do it when I know it's 
it could cause an ounce of like potential danger to like you know pedestrians on the sidewalk or the car it's always like in a small little neighborhood intersection with stop signs never red lights or anything like that it's always just i'll do it just watch them go like that as if i'm making them late because they stopped an extra four seconds i got a question that i think maybe could somewhat save your pick what describe to me what you mean on not using the turn signal like give me an example of driving when it pisses you off so you're driving behind someone and the car in front of you is taking a left and there's oncoming traffic and they just stop in the middle of the intersection on a green light and you kind of got to slam on the brakes a little bit okay Eh, wrong answer. I was going to say the only time you're a douchebag and you don't use your your uh, blinker is if I'm trying to pull out onto a road, right? And somebody's flying on the road that I'm pulling out on and they take a right onto the road I'm sitting on, but don't show their blinker. So I could have gone, but I didn't go because they didn't show me that they were going. No, yeah, but you didn't say that. You, you said, said give me an example. You said move. give me an example. I, I know, I and if you'd you gotten what I just said as the example, I would have respected the pick, but, but I don't. you always should use your directional when you're turning, no matter what. So everything, I, I agree, but it's not like that I mean, big drivers of a it, 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 it can day. It can be a big deal because it can cause accidents. The, Dave just recently got into a car accident. But it wasn't because oh, of this, man, though. Sorry to hear that. You okay? Uh, no, I'm not actually. I'm Fuck. under financial distress because of this. <laughs> Insurance companies are duking it out. I might have to pay for a fucking new car. So I'm oh, not okay. I don't shit, want to do dude. that. I would love to, I would guy. love to <laughs> see you on the call with your insurance agent about the car. Oh, if you saw oh, me the other day. Losing it. Yeah. You saw oh I it's it's guy came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> It's he, honestly he did. He was driving a fucking Volkswagen Beetle. This fucking guy was, or what is it a bug or a Beetle, whatever? And he was behind one of those big ass industrial dumpsters for like construction zones. And I pull out, or, or he pulls out, and I didn't fucking see him, and he didn't see me because this dumpster blocking both of our views, and he just drilled me. It sounds like it looks like the dumpster him. company's at fault here. You pulled out. I, he that uh, dumpster should not have been there. One thousand percent. The guy, the guy's been super cool, but our insurance companies are duking it out, trying to place blame right now, and it's been a fucking disaster. I hate it. And I have full coverage for my car, so it should be taken care of regardless. Like I would take the blame for this accident and just pay the deductible if they would let me fucking do that. But they would just deny the claim or whatever it's called. All right. Ah. So, so not using directional while driving. Hmm. I agree. I don't think that's a great pick. It's just not a. It's just a. It's just not a. Well, I mean, me. the, the Ed, to you, be honest, your car probably does it on its own. Does uh, it? Does no. it actually? Right, do no, it doesn't. Ed, Ed, you're up. It doesn't. Uh, they should do that. All right, it's back to me. Huh. This is hard because I just don't know when to take shit. You know. Yeah. But I'm going to take yeah. one that I think everyone here would agree with, whether it's a reach or not. When you're walking through maybe a crowded place, maybe a sidewalk, it's a douchebag move. The guy who doesn't, you know, you both turn your shoulder to walk by. The guy who just goes fucking straight and he doesn't even turn at all. Alpha. Yeah, and he just fucking, <laughs> so you're a beta, he'll just yeah. plow you over. Like, you're just a douche, though. That's, there's no courteousness there at all. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a big-time douchebag So, move. walking down the street. Yeah, I don't know how to say you it. Want, you, want a, you want a mutual yes, shoulder turn. Every, Not sharing the sidewalk when approaching correct. a stranger. But it's like if you're at a bar, you know, like it's it's best in the bar setting. And if you're in a tight bar space and some dude just completely just fucking yeah. just bulldozes and doesn't do the courteous turn your shoulder, like that's that is a douchebag move. Like you have mm -hmm. to at least you both have to be ducking your shoulder. Now, do you always duck your? You are very you duck you. Well, you move both around, have right? to do it. It's just it's like mm. it's bar law. So Dave? you got you you guys definitely do this. You guys are acting like tough guys now, but there's no way you guys are nah. tough guys like this. I, I who's acting like a tough guy? But well, you're like you're like you're just I'm like just hole poking. Well, I'm just I'm just saying <laughs> this is. I, I, there, what's your argument, then? Eddie? Now, do you have a feeling right now that you don't really like your pick, or we're not? No, I do like it. I think, I think this is a a I think it's a fucking douchebag. I know exactly what you're saying, but if I were in a crowded bar and someone did that to me, I would I would like it wouldn't even cross my mind like oh fuck that douchebag. I would just if like, someone just, just barreled happen. you and didn't fucking move that's, at all, you wouldn't be like, yo, what the fuck? So throwing a shoulder at me, Dave. If someone just doesn't move at I, all. That, but you said no. Like you're me. saying if you're trying to get to the bathroom and somebody sees you and he's more just like with his eyes, like dude, figure it out, get around me. He's not moving to help. Correct. You. Okay. What yeah, do you I mean, think? That, that's, a, that's a dickhead. That's 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 a clown move. I would never draft it. I don't know how yeah. it's going to look on the graphic, like your first pick. But 
That's the thing. I think with all these picks, they're all going to be asshole douchebag moves. Mm-hmm. It's just, is it draft worthy or not? I don't even know how to write this down. Yeah. But I, exactly, I, and you picked it. But I, but it's still a worthy pick. I like this is like the epitome of a douchebag move. That's why I'm surprised mm-hmm. you don't think it should be drafted. Um, people who people who do don't move their shoulder. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Yeah, let's come back to that one during the honorable <laughs> mention. I'll um, it. Chief, you're up. Uh, this is kind of maybe more like Carl's, but and I feel like maybe I'm taking it too high here too. But people who are like make a point to say that oh I don't watch TV. So it's like you'll be talking about True Detective or you're talking about Game of Thrones and they want to let you know that like they're above watching TV, like they read books. What if they haven't seen it, though, and they don't? Watch no, TV? that's different. That's different. If, it, if Do you it's, think people are watching it, but then lying about no, it? No, no. I think that they're genuinely not watching it, but they're like intentionally being like, I'm an intellectual because I don't watch TV. I'm above TV. You see, I live and let live like I don't care. You don't. Oh, you don't. You're such a live and let live guy. <laughs> I mean, what effect does that have on me? Like, at least Ed's like that guy's like being a fucking. But if someone trend. is, but like you've never talked to somebody who is like, oh no, like I was reading like fucking. Yeah, in the back of my head, it'd be like, oh, yeah, this guy fucking, fucking sucks. Douchebag. But like, I, I wouldn't like if someone didn't use their directional in front of me on the way here, I'd still be fucking pissed about it. I don't even think I would notice that. Yeah, you would, because you'd have to, you know, give a little fucking hard tap, and the dog would be flying into the windshield and shit. Well, I'm a defensive driver, so I would probably would have been three steps ahead of you. I'm an yeah, I could see driver. I'm fucking controlling man. those roads. Those are my goddamn roads, Whitney. People who think they're above shit is pretty, yeah, like they're above yeah. it. Like they're that above watching weird. like the thing that everybody else is watching. Yeah, no, I I I feel you. I already can tell that the listeners in this draft are gonna be like, "How the fuck did they not draft this right here?" Like, well, for well they're listen, always. Like I that. mean, you, those those three second round picks. I don't know. <laughs> um, I got a banger coming up here that the listeners are gonna love. All right, let's but do go it. Go ahead, Chief. If you have no, to that's it. On that. That's it. I'm okay. good. If you okay. got a banger, let's hear your banger. My banger, and everyone's seen it happen, and everyone's had to deal with the consequences. But when somebody pulls into a parking spot and takes up two of them, that's a great wow. one. They're a bad human being. Ed's doing because that you outside know right now. When it's a busy time and a busy parking lot, and you see a spot finally, and then you look. And one ninth or one tenth of the car in the spot next to it is in that spot enough where you and nobody else, unless you're in a motorcycle, can park there. That person deserves to have their key card. I mean, their car keyed and possibly a, a very angry note written and left to them on the windshield. Mm. So I, I think that there's taking a diff- two spots. Have you parking. left angry notes before? Uh, with? How many? Th- no, but I've gotten some left on my car. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of car do you drive with? Uh, Escalade. So you got to, I mean, and to Ed's defense, he does do that. But the fucking guys upstairs, they, they're, the, they're yeah. in the middle. I do not do that. You, you out of force sometimes. Yeah. Those guys. Then you are, do it too out of force. Right. Out of force because yeah. they park in that middle yeah. thing that's not a parking there's, okay. there's been a Good whole point. like Larry David uh, curb your enthusiasm about that where it's like, I didn't do it. It was the guy before me forced me down one. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. There's a good point where yeah. you, you're like, you're like, I have to do this now. So some, and then if everyone leaves, I look like the absolute yeah, douche. Right. But <laughs> yeah. in the end, you know, like at night when you put your head on the pillow, I didn't do that today. I'm not a dickhead. You can go but to sleep. Whoever peacefully. started the whole thing is a douchebag. The I uh, there is like people who are just bad parkers. There are also people who are like, my car's nice. I'm taking up two spots so you don't think my door. Those people are oh, on a whole different level. That. Like, yeah. and that's. You know, King Douchebag Ryan Whitney himself with his hundred thousand. I don't think I don't think Whit would do that. Have no, you done that, no, buddy? I'm telling you. I mean, I've definitely like done it before, probably on accident. Actually, definitely on accident, or definitely if I was forced to, like we mentioned. But I actually, more than anything, now I don't care. I've had the car for a year; it's all dinged up. But right when I get a new car, I'll park further away and go for a nice walk to just not be around, not try to have to squeeze into a spot. But I don't ever take up two spots. That's a no beast way. of a car, what, what too. It, let me ask you this, and I'm I'm guilty of this. Say I'm at the mall going to uh, check in on my American Eagle stock, and you get out of the car and you notice, ah, oh, man, I should straighten that out a little bit, and you're like, nah. What about that? I'll do, I'll, if, if, I have, if I have parked and in any way possible am stopping the spot next to me from being able to be parked in, I'm going to fix my car. I'm going to figure it out. I know a lot of people listening to Chicklets and who know me probably say bullshit, but I swear. <laughs> I'm calling bullshit. I swear on our dog Yoshi. 
All right, if you see Whitney doing this, uh, five grand uh, bounty from White Sox Dave. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I will pay that five grand if you see Whitney doing this. He's got an escalating. He lives in. Do you got the escalate in Florida or is that back in Arizona or wherever no, the fuck no, you live? No, no, it's Fort Lauderdale. But I just drive a golf cart everywhere here, so. There's no way you're paying anybody five grand. <laughs> Well, I think he would probably <laughs> try to. A house. I think he would probably say, "Hey, Wit, I got this video. You better give me ten grand or put it <laughs> yeah. there." I would ruin his right Shake his ass down. Yeah. Shake him down. I would um, love that. One one day, I'll have something over Whitney's head where I just extort the fuck out of him, like like it's Euphoria. Hey, Dave. Ed watches Euphoria. No, you won't. No, you I, won't. I, I, one day, you'll never have anything over my head or anything on top of me or anything better than me. So deal with it. <laughs> my dog's better than your dog. Oh fuck! My dad's richer than your dad. <laughs> <laughs> what is what does money have to do with it? It's the same type thing. Like my my dad's cooler than your dad. Like you just sound like a <laughs> joke. Obviously, you think your dog that you've been with. That's the joke, you fucking moron. Is better than yours, you loser. That's the joke. It's like the fucking Simpsons gif. Um, Carl, you're up. Eddie, you brought up being in a bar, doing something in a bar. Mm-hmm. I think like the biggest douchebag. The biggest douchebag thing you can do at a bar is take your shirt off taking your shirt off at a bar mm. you'd be at a bar if it's like after a cubs game or like if it's i remember in college there's a guy who would always take his shirt off at station and do like pull-ups at the bar and it's just like it's harmless right Hardo. that's harmless Hardo. but it's just Big like dude time. you're such a fuck it's just such a douchebag fucking move yeah now having said that if i was jacked and maybe had a couple sick tribal tattoos i wouldn't hate <laughs> taking my tarp <laughs> off in the bar <laughs> yeah it's a fair point that's a fair point. Yeah, that's more you of know, like a lot of those guys jealous. doing it. They're like, all right, I'm going to get laid once a couple girls see like that I'm Jack. So I, I agree, though. Total douchebag move. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, very more obviously more prevalent in college. You know, yeah, like, yeah. you don't really see it a ton anymore. But then you'd be like, I mean, it'd be the day you'd be like walking to class and you'd be like, oh, that's the guy who takes it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that guy. Mm-hmm. No. White Sox Dave, you ever take your shirt off at a bar? I'm not taking my shirt off anywhere. No one wants to see that. I don't even sleep with my shirt off anymore. I I've never <laughs> That's really. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. I'm a mm, I'm a t-shirt gross. basketball shorts guy in bed. Yeah, I I, w- I would say that fits, Carl. I uh, haven't slept with an article of clothing on my body in 25 years. Just d- naked, nude. I, I think no that say that they say that's how you're supposed to as well. Why? Well, I don't know. It's like. Uh, there's something to it. I, I, I well, was... easy access when my wife gives me the green light some more. <laughs> there you go. Would she put a finger in your ass? You like uh, that? Oh, fuck. I'd take that any day of the week. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Out of boy. <laughs> Jesus. Yep. You wouldn't. And if you haven't, don't judge it. Don't knock it till you tried it. Amen to that. <laughs> Never mind. You're uh, up again. Okay, I I was going to try and get this in the fifth round. I'm just going to take it now. Um, and Eddie, I'm sorry. but And I'm sorry to myself as well. But being in a frat, hmm. joining a frat in college, even though it was great, I have a ton of friends. I loved being in the frat. But, like, I just – when we were going through this and I was playing stuff and I was looking back, so many of these, like, moves and stuff, I'm like, God, I did, I did that. I was in – like, yeah. that was just part of the culture. And it was fun, but we were fucking douchebags. And the whole concept is, du- it's just like a douchebag. It was awesome. It was awesome. But being in a frat, generally speaking, is a douchebag move. I don't think I would have been in one if I went to a big school. I went through the process for like two and a half weeks, and I'm like, this is not for me. Nah, I, Chief, I, you know what? Chief, I don't see you as a frat guy at all. You're a stick to your guns. You're not yeah. dealing with the bullshit. To- now, here's my thing about frats. Carl and – so you, you played college baseball like – I'm surprised you were in a frat, like, because you had the team. Because I've always said I would, I would never be in a frat. I'd never be in a frat. It's a clown move. But if you went to a school and you didn't really know anyone, I could kind of understand. It's like how you're gonna meet people. But if you're on the baseball team, you already had your boys to begin with. Yeah. So I walked on the baseball team my sophomore year. My freshman oh, okay. year, I got in big trouble okay. and I couldn't go out. I was like on double secret probation with the university, so team I didn't warmer. really do anything. And team then I worked warmer. out. Then I walked on the baseball team. And if I didn't walk on the baseball team, I was going to pledge the frat. And I was just hanging out with the guys in the frat because my best friend was in the frat. So I didn't pledge. I, like, pledged as a joke as a junior. I was like, yeah, I'll join the frat because I was going to be in school for five years. So I was a junior 
like it, it originally started as a joke and then I just got like into it and like liked the frat boy culture and I didn't tell any of my buddies on the baseball team and then it was like the spring that season I like showed up from a bar crawl and I was wearing the bar crawl shirt from the night before and they're like why are you wearing those fucking letters and like a couple guys knew you know that like I was rushing around and playing around I was like I'm actually in the house and they had no fucking clue and my buddies on the baseball team were just like ripping me apart but it merged perfectly because you'd go out and like all the guys in the frat would work at the bars and did you ever uh like put your hand on somebody's chest trying to get into your frat party <laughs> <laughs> that's I feel like that's the douchebag move you did it you did that uh no but it was no, almost like girls when, only man yeah <laughs> no hey dude when like, you're in it, like, you, you think it's hilarious, man. you know? Oh, like, dude, it's, it's, like, it's yeah. the funniest shit. I mean, yeah. when, we, when we would throw theme parties at the house and you'd be like, uh, you know, okay, we're going to dress up. This room is going to be like, you know, yeah, we're yeah. going to turn this into like a fucking nightclub. And I like, think, you would just, yeah, like you really got into like the playlists and like, you know, the pre games and. Yeah, I think everyone could, even if you're in one, you could admit there was a level of douchebaggery. So, yeah, I think it's a good pick. So just frat, yeah. frat guys being, uh, a frat. being in it. Nah. I think it's is it is it pledging a frat or is it being in a frat? Being in a frat, I take. I that. think just being a frat guy, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's not a move, really. That's like a whole genre of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's a good point. Joining a frat, maybe. So maybe know. it has to be like you're working the door at the frat house. Pledging, <laughs> yeah. Like it would be like bouncing a frat party. Um. I'm trying to think. I if you can come up with it, it'll be a fucking great pick because when I think just douchebag, the first thing that pops in my head is like frat swoop, like popped collar, SEC, Ole Miss, white kid douchebag. Okay, I'll make myself sound even worse now that you bring this up. When we graduated from college and like we moved to Chicago and guys were like coming out in Chicago, we literally would not go out in groups of less than like fifteen. It would be like, yo, did you? There, there'd be fucking trolley buses and like birthday <laughs> parties, and it was like every fucking. Or you'd have you'd have a group of fifteen guys going on like one table for bottle service, and just fucking, you know, you'd only you'd end up paying like two hundred bucks to get like a couple of drinks, just so you could be like, yeah, well, we're at underground and we have a table, like that whole culture. So I don't. What is the move be, there? Uh, overzealously perpetuating. <laughs> Frat stereotypes. I'm just gonna take join in a frat. Having yeah, cat. that's fine. Yeah, just go with that. Um, Whitney, you're up. Whoever's listening will get it. Hey, let the record show. Eddie started his fraternity chapter. Or, no, that's you not were true. the president. Don't, you no, were the. You don't want to hear that. That's like the worst thing you could do. Really? Because if you start it, then it's like a bunch of nobodies. Oh like, no, yeah, no, you no, didn't no, start no, it, no, but no, you were no, the president. No, yeah, I was. Mm -hmm. You were the ring. You were the started. ring leader. That's, you okay. don't want no, that kind of stuff. All right, I'm, I apologize. I take that away. I <laughs> That's take that a bad away. connotation. I don't even know how frats work. Really, we didn't have them, and we weren't allowed to in my school. Did you go to college? What? Yes, I went to BU. But um, are there even frats there? There might be like one frat there, but it's not. It's not a frat type place. There might be one, but you never saw the guys out. It was. It was. Well, it was it's like not an urban like school, right? A big school. What? It's like an urban school, right? Yeah, it's like you're downtown Boston, so yeah. it's just it was it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, I loved it, but it was also some things I probably would change when I when I look back at, at and hear of other people's college experiences. Yeah, college. Never, time. I never how, went to one house party in college. We only went to bars. How many? Oh, how many crazy. years oh, were you there? Loser. Uh, three. Oh, really? Left after junior year. Okay. Damn. And what were you drafted overall? Fifth. Nice. That's yeah, pretty, pretty sick. Must have been thanks, a really, lot, really appreciate, weak draft appreciate class. Appreciate you pumping my tires. I'm well, I'm just saying, if you're a junior walk around, bring me down. I'm saying you're a junior walk around college, and it's like, yeah, you know, I might get drafted. Like I might go in the fifth round. Like you're like, yo, I'm going fifth no, you overall. Get drafted no, you're overall. Eight before you go. Yeah. So you oh, showed you, up oh, you were eight. Bit. You showed up on campus. Uh, no. So that I got drafted after my freshman year. Now guys get drafted after their senior year of high school. So my sophomore and junior year at BU, I had been drafted. Wow, Duncan Keith was in that draft. I mean, yeah, that's he went later fascinating. That made a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I'm up. Right, yeah, you're, up. you're third up. Third uh -huh. pick, third round pick. All right, this is a good one, I think. Um, Being drafted. I'll take overall? you back in time to when this was the biggest issue, and then when I really realized if I'm going to ever be in a douchebag draft, this is going to be a one of my picks. Uh, I don't know. Have you guys <laughs> ever seen the movie Sicario? Starring yes. Benicio del Toro. Yeah, very good. Unreal movie. flick. Sequel's good too. And 
Yeah, sequel's okay, but I, yeah, it was good. But the, the I love Sicario, and I was 30 minutes into this movie at the movie theater just having a time. Like, this is a fucking great movie so far. And what happens? Two asshole douchebag pricks started talking loudly for the next 45 minutes. And if you're in a movie theater and you're talking loud to the people you're with or viewing this movie with and ruining the experience for other people who paid and are possibly really enjoying the movie, you're a douchebag. So talking during the movies in the movie theater out loud is a douchebag move. There, is, there are few things in this world that make me more upset than that. I go to the movies a lot. And this fuck. Well, I used to all the time, and it, it's crazy. And how often it happens, dude? It enrages me. The That's... whole three and a half hours of the Irishman, the lady behind me just kept commenting on everything. And I just oh, that I, is just do you snap. That is just, Get up and leave. Makes me so mad. I actually did I snap. I did. I go, Can you guys shut up? Wait, what'd you say? Sorry. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to interrupt. I I I, I thought he was asking if I snapped. I did snap at the two guys. I said, "Can you shut up?" Oh. And they were like, oh, "What's your problem?" I'm, like, I'm trying to watch the movie, dude. It's the worst. It, it, like and, and like movie tickets are expensive. The fucking popcorn ain't cheap. Stay the fuck home. Yeah. But then at the same time, this is one we've definitely all pulled when we were in kids. For sure. Kids are different though. Kids are yeah. kids got the attention span of Dave Williams. It's like <laughs> they don't count. I'm talking, <laughs> talking about the wrong guy. That I so I saw it was Jurassic Park 2 in theaters with a babysitter and I was a little or I want to say it was like 12 13 but my brother was younger. And he was just raising hell. She took uh, the babysitter, took me, my sister, and my brother to the movie. And my brother could not shut up, could not focus. He was probably seven ish at the time. And I remember specifically the guy right in front of us got up and went to like the opposite side of the theater as a way to say, shut the fuck up. And I was like, he's right. I'm sorry. It was bad. It's, it's a just, if you're one of those people, you should be fucking hung. It's a it's a dick move. I got you. Just got to, or if and if the if theater's empty, which now a lot of the times they are, go go in, oh, far away from anyone if you want to talk. But being next to somebody and talking in the movie theaters is on my list. It's on my draft board. Yeah, it, it's, that's a good. One. That's a first round pick. It enrages yeah. me. But but to me, like here's the thing. It's a this is where it's tough because douchebag to me, it's just like you're inconsiderate as fuck. But yep. I guess it all blends. So yeah, I know. That's why this draft is definitely there is some nuance. Yeah, there. like like I said, this is one of like top three things that anger me. But like I. I don't know. Yeah. But, but if I left the theater with you, Eddie, and we listen to two goons ruin our experience, and then I got in the car and I go, those two guys were douchebags, you'd be like, yeah, they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it's also like, I feel like, because I don't know, for whatever reason, the last couple of times it's been like old ladies who keep talking that just like need to comment on everything. But when it's kids, like they're or like, you know, like young guys Teenager, in their 20s yeah. yelling or something like that. Those are douchebags. So I don't know. Well, yeah. I can guess an old lady be a douchebag? That's what I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm having yeah. trouble with. No, an old lady can be a douchebag. Absolutely. Bag. Could she? Yeah. yeah. They that's can be fine. the biggest douchebags in the world. Yeah. yeah. Come ah, on, you old guy. Yeah, yeah. Stop being a fucking douche. Regardless, um, it's the worst. Great pick. I can't it focus. I can't pick, focus. Whitney. Thank yeah. you, boys. Thank you, boys. I think Wit's running away with us. Well, oh, man. make a good There's pick right here. Cheap. Yeah. I mean, All right. So I'm going with. I got one. two more. I got two more picks. Don't, don't, don't. Let's not count our chickens. Hey, what yet. was your second round pick? Two parking spots? Yeah. Two parking spots. That's, that's a good a, one, too. That's all right. Uh, this one, I think, might be the same guy as Ed's guy in the bar. But the guy, when you're in a crowded bar and you accidentally like turn and bump into somebody and they want to fight you. Like the fight guy in the bar, like who's like, whoa, whoa, you, what, what are you doing? What are you like, like hyper aggressive guy in the bar when you like accidentally bump into somebody? That guy is a douchebag. And you know what? That guy never, ever, ever, ever wants to fight. I think that's basically my pick, though. No, 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 no. It's way different. Than oh, that. this is tough. This is so different. This Do you is think so, so different. It's, it's it's the same uh, guy, but it's a it, different it's, act. It, it's yeah. very similar. I'm actually, it is different. Like I, I'm not going to veto this pick, no way. But it's similar um, enough where I knew you'd say that, Eddie. Put it that way. Yeah, like I, but like I, this is literally who I drafted. No, it's not. I just dra yeah, well, yeah, it is. It's, oh, we're not drafting douchebags. We're drafting douchebag moves. So in theory, we could take the same person doing twenty five. Sure, yeah, you're, think, right. you're right. I think this right. guy would True. do both. Point. Would right. do both things for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, then that's, that's but that's all but I'm this is a different. To me, this is worse than your thing. What they yes. like this, when he, the guy who like if you bump into him and like you, maybe you spill a drop of oh, beer, sorry, man. Yeah, yeah, instead of just having like a normal human reaction, right. they they it. like want to escalate things and look tough. That, so guy who always know. picks fight at bar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
so, and Chief, you know what's funny is uh, so because of people like that, I'm sure you guys are kind of the same where you almost get and this is younger when you're a little younger, but you almost get hypersensitive to it where if you bump into someone right away, you're like, hey, sorry, man, sorry, because you just don't want to deal with if, if it's one of those lunatics. Yeah. And, you know, ho hopefully he's a normal guy that says, you know, I don't care. And I had a buddy who he was constantly if he got bumped into same thing in the person was like, hey, sorry, man, he had a great line. He's like. Hey, dude, I, I came to the bar tonight. I planned on getting bumped into a couple of times. No worries at all. You know, just trying to make them yeah. feel better. Basically being the exact opposite of the guy you just drafted. That's a good line. That's you, what that's how every single person should act. But they don't. So it's crazy. How many like fights? How many bar fights do you think happen just from the, you know, a little ca guys, accidental just a bump. casual bump? Yeah. Half, Yo, half of them. Hey, 90 percent at them. least. And that's why that's why when you I get wish my into, guy got more appreciation. That guy's looking for the bumps. <laughs> you should have you should have articulated well, that's that. Better. I did no, it. You're right? saying my guy's looking for the bumps. He's out there fucking smelling blood like he wants to see blood. That's why he's out. I think you should have opened with the bar instead of using the sidewalk. I probably should have. Yeah. Those guys never actually want to fight though. The majority of the time, sometimes you get that lunatic that will throw a punch in public for like reasons that do not elicit that shouldn't elicit that reaction but i've probably been in since i've gotten older and just don't give a fuck anymore my favorite move is whenever i'm in this situation this has happened in the last i'd say five years maybe maybe a half dozen times i put my hands under the table and i look at them and go nice and suave i say swing at me as hard as you fucking can right now and i won't move an inch and just look them in the eye and say that and they never do a thing they just walk away <laughs> Every single time. I can't wait till you open the wrong door and some dude just dribbles you. Yeah, and guess at, what? I'll have fucking, fucking dumb. I'll have this asshole next to me or one of my other friends, and then it's on after that. Look at how Chief look is going to beat this guy up. Look he would. It. I he would have my back for sure, just like for I would sure. have his. Yeah. Yeah. I know that Chief would have your back, but you just threatened a guy. You were like, I you didn't can punch. How did I not threaten? threaten? But you, you. If someone you, punched you Dave, asked, I would jump in. Yeah, you asked to get punched in the face, right? Yeah, because he would start threatening me. I said, "All right, put your money where your mouth is, tough guy. Let's see how tough you I are." I mean, it's and an they, alpha they, move, Dave. I'll give it to you. It yeah. just may not always work out. I, the way I, it's I understand. Out. Look at his fucking pumpkin. His skull is like an inch thick. He's not. He'll just eat that punch and keep going. It's fine. That that is true. I think you'd have to hit me with like a bat because my head's so fat and bulbous. But you got a it, big neck too. Like no one's knocking your, your head off. Your advice to de-escalate a fight is Dude, to, is to like explicitly yeah. ask the guy to punch you in the face. It's it's it's, it's in those situations. It's already been escalated to the point dry. where he's like challenging me to a fight. I'm like, if you want to fight, hit me as hard as you fucking can. I'm not gonna move an inch. It'd be wild. And they never you... ever ever do it. And they just like they're like, oh fuck, he got me there. He trumped me. And it's it's like all right, that's what I thought, and you walk away. It's a good move. Be crazy if you got decapitated, just fucking your head knocked clean off your body. When was the last time someone punched you in the face? Uh, after the Sox game, uh, oh, yeah. August. My he he got jumped by you the got so in a fight. You got in a fight like this past? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this this was uh, 2019. It would have been because that was oh. was, I was I with at you my old turtles. Job. You were two seconds beforehand, and to this day, I was like, I wish Carl was there because it was. It was five on one. Tell the story. Tell the story, Dave. What? It was the. Do you remember when I did that nine 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 thing, the nine beers, nine hot dogs, nine innings? Yep. yep. Um, okay, I did that. With, and come on, give me a little. With, with Carl, with Carl, um, I uh, got hooked up with Scout Seats, which are like the premier seats right behind home plate, and it's all you can eat and drink, free booze or free booze, free food, and. This one, there's a section of White Sox fans that like fucking hate me because I'm not from the South Side. I'm from the West Suburbs, and uh, one of these guys got my number through. I actually found out how he got my number. Not that that's important, but he got my phone number and he's texting me the whole game like, "You fucking loser! I'm gonna fucking beat your ass." I'm like, "All right, motherfucker, I'm gonna be at Turtles after the game drinking beer. Let's see." Wow. So and Turtles is a bar like a block or two from the stadium. So I'm walking out of the bar. He gets there. Carl had just left. I didn't think he was gonna show up. And he had like five of his goons. He's like, let's go out and fight in the park. I'm like, let's go out and what fight in the, the park. What the fuck? You don't even know this guy? No. I had I I, I knew who he was afterwards, yeah. Like I I through connections, I knew who he was. So we're circling each other up and and his guys are like the t the circle's getting tighter. So I, I hit him and all his friends just fucking went on, in on me. And my face was like swollen up and shit. Um, and then it got broken up by the catcher at Louisville, who was on not or he was on the top ten plays on Sports Center, like 
three days after this. Saving you. Saving, no, not saving me. He just happened to see the fight, and he gave me a ride home that night. He was in college. He just got drafted, actually. I stayed in touch with him a little bit. Funny story. Side story. And um, wow. so afterwards, to Chief's point again, I get back to Turtles, and my, my nose is bleeding. My lips are swollen a little bit. And the kid just took a crow hop and threw a punch at me as hard as he could right in the temple. And at that point, I'm like, everybody, and there's like a crowd for me and everything. I'm like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm going to get fucking the shit kicked out of me because it's five on one, five on two, kind of. So I just I'm got confused. out of there. I'm confused. So they surrounded you and kind of beat you up. And then you went back to the bar that they were at? That's where the Uber stand was. That's how it, that was the only option. Yeah. Wow. These people, dude, you should have like. Well, I'll, I'll say this, though. I did throw the first punch because it was either I that know. or get kicked. Like the shit kicked out of me without having anything like yeah. to go for it. So I threw the first punch and I got on top of him and just started wailing on him. I got like three, four real good punch square in his fucking face. So he was fucked up, too. Nice, but nice, it good, was like five good. on one. I mean, that guy, he's he's like top spot in this draft <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah yeah like, yeah and he, and this was all because you're basically a white Sox fan like a, a noted public figure that's not from the south Side. yes exactly wow that is it that is the number one douchebag we just got our first overall <laughs> pick after the and he's, he's a big Rumble. barstool fan from what i'm aware of what i know of him and he probably is gonna hear this and he is gonna be heartbroken that ryan whitney <laughs> said that about him and well, he's it. probably going to come gunning for me because <laughs> no, I don't, I'm not he's, from Fort Lauderdale, he's, but I'm visiting. Him. He's he's <laughs> probably 6'3", 262, and I'm 5'7", 205. The, the good news hey, man, is... I don't mean what I was saying, then. I take it all back. Well, <laughs> he wasn't tough. He was, like, soft and pudgy. The good Trump. news is, though, Whitney, Dave has learned because someone did challenge him last summer at the bar, and instead of, like, having a confrontation, he had a body shot off. Have you ever heard of this? <laughs> No, just giving each other gut punches yeah. until, yes. until somebody gives in. What'd the guy say to you, Dave? He's like, I, I walk. He's like, I don't really like you for the same reason. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, like I don't give a shit. And I was fucked up. And so we're like, all right, we're gonna do. We're gonna take a shot of Jameson, punch each other in the stomach until someone taps out, and whoever taps out has to pay the tab. So I, he ended up. He got me. He won, and so I had to pay the tab, and you I walked be outside. Buddies with this guy at this point, though, I don't even know. Someone who. sent me his buddy. The buddy he sent me the pictures of it, and it's just I just I, I look at him like once a I month. I took the and shot. I he fucking hit me, and I was like, oh. and I just went outside and puked my brains out. No, it's so As a fun. content creator, you gotta wish that was almost on video, just the back and forth. Body it was blows. like you a random a new spleen. It was the exact same bar from the other one. Too. Yeah, yeah. Maybe stay out of turtles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of the time it's a good time. <laughs> hey, turtle. Yeah, turtles. Ten percent of the time you get punched. It's fine. Turtle, yeah. Turtles is actually a really good bar. I, I love, love turtles. turtles. Yeah. yeah. How did we get here? By uh, because Chief's guy. Uh, yeah. It was picking up fight at the bar, right? Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Um. All right. So it's picking a fight <laughs> at the bar. All right. So it's to me. Before I make my pick, I want to talk about upstart here because uh, paying off your debt can suck, Dave. Yeah, I I know that. I, I hear you. Oh, we're letting Dave here. do another ad read after <laughs> Roman. Oh. Hey, I'm the Omen Roman ad read king on this in this entire podcast network, Ryan Whitney. Okay. <laughs> uh, Upstart can help you pay off your existing debt quickly and easily with a personal loan, so you could start living your life. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows you're more than just a credit score, so rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in just five minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000, and you can even receive the funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. So find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash eddie. That's upstart.com slash Eddie, E-D-D-I-E. -E. Don't forget to use our URL because it lets them know that we sent you. Uh, loan amounts, one more time, will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. That's that's good. That's that's smart, Dave. I'm going to be going to upstart.com slash Eddie 
as soon as I get home today, now that I have a mortgage on my hands. There we go. Upstart.com slash Eddie. Go Actually, I it. can't. It's more than 250 Not All right. Me. So it's back to me. It's back to me. <laughs> so mine are like super specified because I was really thinking about the moves. So mine like really falls under the umbrella of the guy right now. And I'm actually curious on how Whitney's going to take this one because I this is like, I think you guys do this, but I obviously don't think you guys are douchebags. But like, I really wanted some for the guy who's always like talking about like all the girls he banged and whatnot. And mm-hmm. to me, I just have like the guy who's like always talking about his kills, you know? You, do, like, you just, just drafted like, Biz. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You just drafted but, like, Biz. I don't, but Biz is not, I love Biz. You know, that's not really, you know, you know the guy who's like, oh yeah, like fuck If me. you didn't know Biz, you'd think yeah, he was a douchebag for that. Biz was doing it, sorry, Biz was doing it when single because it was like, you know, it's the show and like people like hearing like his stories. They were insane, ridiculous stories. But I know what you're saying. If you're just like with a guy on a bachelor party having beers and like all of a sudden he's just on and on and on. Yeah, no doubt. I mean. Yeah, and like he he calls I, I, them kills, and like that's what like so like specifically constantly talking about your kills is what I want. Yeah, like that's like I feel like that's also the guy who's always like, where are the chicks, where are the chicks at? Yeah, are yeah, 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 chick- yeah, yeah. Are we going out? Are there gonna be chicks there, bro? Yeah, there's yeah. not gonna be chicks there, and I don't want to talk to a chick. Shut the fuck <laughs> no, up. No, we're going to turtles, dude. We're doing body <laughs> yes. blow for body blow. There's no chicks. Of course, there's not chicks. You fucking idiot. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but no, I, 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 I yeah, I, I'm, I'm down with that pick. I, I, I don't know how the board is going to put Eddie's picks though. I don't know. The board's oh, that one right? should be easy. The board's I mean, important, but I'm like at this Ken point Jack's after just, my second one, I'm just, I'm going for myself. Yeah, and, for sure. And it's fine. I'm gonna take what I, what I believe in my heart rather than the graphic because it's gonna be impossible. I, I'm already sunk. Again. Thank you. <laughs> I'm already <laughs> sunk. So uh, yeah, constantly talking about your kills is just. Uh, the epitome of a douchebag move. I Wait think. until Ken Jack just puts p- Biz and S face on there. <laughs> do, do, how would Biz, Biz say Biz that? Biz has changed his game. Different man now. Different man. <laughs> yeah, he, he is. He yeah, is a different that man. was 2018, how, Chicklets. How would he, how would he Fucking say? had this chick eat my hoop. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I it mean, sounds he more told like a story where the, basis, the, the main character of the story was shitty Cindy. So you imagine where that thing went. <laughs> Fucking shitty Kirk. Cindy. Oh, jeez. Jesus. How's she doing? I don't know. I've, I've tried to erase that story from my memory. <laughs> that was about five years ago now, it feels like. Um, White Sox, Dave. Uh, not spraying down machines at the gym. Oh, I had some gym stuff. Solid. Mm. Solid pick. Now, I haven't been a member of a gym in a few years, but I was a member of Lifetime Fitness for five six years maybe even longer than that i think that's a college good one. gyms i don't think that's the best but one. i think that's not the best gym one yeah me neither yeah i mean that's... but i had it down i had three gym ones down and uh that was one of them but but i still respect the pick there are other how should i how should i word this that's the i think it's the douchiest move at the gym because there's bodily fluids being exchanged in other instances, you're just being annoyed with what someone's saying, I think, and how they're acting at the gym. This is just a fucking cocksucking move. It's like, dude, get your sweat off the goddamn bench press, you asshole. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, no, for sure. If you just leave your fucking you were in a gym? sweaty ass shirt. When's the last time to, you were, yeah, you were like tw- prior to 2020. I mean, I got the Peloton now, so that's my gym. I was just curious because I never, I, I would love to do like a, I haven't been a member of a gym since 2019 when I was at. Echo. Yeah, but if you spend 365 or one day a year, you know this guy. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm yeah, saying you know like I would, yeah. I would like to be in the, I would like to be in like the, uh, the bench press room with like White Sox Dave at like 6 a.m. on a Tuesday while the yeah. fucking power <laughs> lifters are me. in there throwing the weight around. <laughs> um, all right, so not spraying down machine at gym. You're up again, White Sox Dave. This one is a little, I would say, more personal to us. And it's snitch tagging or tattletailing on the internet. If I like, if I give a fucking uh, Ravel, basically, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, we could just say Darren Ravel's Twitter. Just draft Ravel. <laughs> I, I would. I wish that were a legal move because that would be the first overall pick. But um, like, if I'm talking about JP Graziano's on Twitter or something, and someone will tag Portnoy and be like, "Hey, can you believe this? He's giving free ads out." It's like. Send him an email and tell him to fire me, like, and make it official, please. And I always, always wish I never respond to these people, but I can't do it. I'm like a fucking fly 
in those little purple fly lights that buzz and zap them. I just can't avoid it. You always... I hate those motherfuckers. You always accuse Captain Cons of being a reply guy, but you're a reply guy, reply guy. I'm a reply guy <laughs> to people like snitch tagging me for sure. Yeah. And I'll always leave I, Portnoy or Big Cat in there too. I'll be like, hey, ask them to fire me. See if they respond. Dude, snitch tagging is pathetic. I actually had somebody, this was a couple of years ago, send me a DM like Grinelli was uh, like popping a bottle or like basically Grinelli was acting like crazy in the bar, like was the premise of the DM. And I responded back. I wrote, I think you thought I would take this message and then like call him out on the show. But what I did was read this message and realize you're the biggest loser that's ever written me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, what, did you respond to that? No. <laughs> of course not. He was like, ah, oh, fuck. What are you going to say to that? You know, I just owned him. Now, I can't completely disavow this pick because, you know, I got a show on Tuesdays and I like to... Uh, you know, if people are doing doing <laughs> yeah, things true. they shouldn't do, and oh, I know, and everyone texts that pigeon Portnoy too. It's true. Everyone hey, get this guy in trouble. I'm with Dave though. Fuck it. Yeah, no, I I, I get Dave's point completely. I'm just saying from They're the show standpoint, it's funny. They're just Um. All right, it's back to me. So snitch tagging on Twitter is your pick, correct? Yeah. So all right, back to me. Same thing. Like I I have a guy in my mind who I think is just like you're a douche. And uh, the guy, I'm, I'm going with the car guy, the guy who calls the car my baby and, like, you know, she purrs. I think, I think the hardcore oh, car. Just talk to the car guy. The, there's mechanics tough, out there motherfucking that's red Dude, right no, that's dude. That's, like, part you, of the listen, American fabric. Listen, listen, it's okay to be a car guy, but to call her your baby and, like, you know, like, that's If that's you got too a much. vintage car, like a 67 Mustang Stingray or something, I don't know if that's a car, but uh, some vintage car, and it, it, you have an emotional connection to that car because you've had it for so long taken care of like that is absolutely an allowable move i i do not hate those guys whatsoever i think that's an awful pick that, that that's fine but uh yeah i think you're a douche so that, that's where I, I i'm not a car guy i don't i'm not either yeah yeah i could see I by your look you're, yeah. you're not a fan of the, you think that too I, right? yeah, yeah but it's like one of those things where it's uh, like it's not my money like spend money yeah. however you want but i also to feel each like their own. but Be happy I also like don't want to hear. You want to see it. my baby come to my garage? Yeah, I'll take like, the I'll take the cover I off. I don't want. Yeah, come like, on. What are we pray. doing here? No, everyone's afraid of the car guys see, with me. Th it's so much I'm different. Not, no, I I'm I'm with you on that. But it's like I, don't I, think I, it's I a also feel, but I feel like a douchebag for calling that guy a douchebag, even though I think he's a douchebag. I don't think you think <laughs> he's a douchebag. I think he's like being lame. <laughs> you're like, just dude, a nice guy, chief. Lame, like dude. If you're like, ah, dude, what a like. I think there is a there is a little bit of a blur there. Mm. Like my grandpa, out you hate it. Huh? Had no, I mean I think you should have specified the car if you came in here and you told me Tokyo Drift. I'm fucking all in, Ed. But it's just like, but that I, goes into I don't know all if you're talking later. about like if you're talking about like a, a '67 Shelby or something. Like, come on, dude, that's fucking classic. Like, there's yeah. there's there's some limits. It's like like a th fucking Trans Am. Or, sure, I never specified the old school guys though. So like, it's not like I came at them in particular. How often do you run into a Thunderbird? Come like, on. I don't know if I've ever like really met someone like this. We, There's so few. Don't have to meet many of them. Hmm. You just you remember them. But if someone if someone has like a vintage car collection or any sort of car collection where they're like, hey, let's go check out the cars. And you spend five minutes looking at the cars. I wouldn't be like, this guy's a fucking douchebag. Yeah, but like, dude, Depends there's guy like the guy who's always it. washing his thing. The guy who's like, get the fucking kids out of here while I'm washing my car. Like, that's who I'm talking about. What about the guys who live in like Joliet? Now I'm just using Joliet as an example. They'll live in in more affordable places, like uh, or they'll like split a townhouse with a couple buddies, and then they'll all have like supercars. They're like supercar nuts. So they'll spend like three hundred thousand dollars on a car, but then like a hundred thousand dollars on their house yeah i mean that's great i mean like get your priorities right talk to a financial advisor you know like that's a that's a culture around i'm saying i'm asking you is like that the extent of douchebag you're talking about you're talking about somebody who like goes above and beyond for their car for sure that's like you got the spoiler morons those ones you got the spoiler on the honda civic like you're just not a fan um chief back to you all right, well, I feel like I'm going to take a car one, too, but it's, it's anybody with a loud car. Yeah. Like, that, to me, is like, if you have a passion about your car, Ed, uh, it's not my thing, but whatever. If you're driving down the street and your car, like, you've souped it up, so you've taken the muffler off or whatever, and your car's fucking loud, or you have, like, 
the crazy like bass system rolling down like fucking Division Street. <laughs> You roll by and I just like turn. I like I fucking hate that. Loud person. cars are the fucking loud worst. car people Big are the f- time. They're Good fucking day. terrible. I think I told the story when I get to a stoplight or a stop sign and I'm I maybe I'm pumping music with the windows down in the summer. I'm turning the music down. Yeah, like I'm not I'm not going to be the guy that's just like everyone's like, dude, are you serious right now? I'm with you, chief. Thank you. Yeah, and and it's like they're looking for attention too. Like that. Like I don't know, and I don't know who they think they're impressing when their car is like they're revving their engine or they have the bass that's like shaking the windows of the neighborhood. Like nobody thinks that's cool. Nobody. So fuck that guy. I hate loud that's car guy. You guys are like the Spider Man meme. This we week, are. Right? We're, yeah. Like, yeah. we're so like <laughs> we're so close. We're like, like hovering the, around yeah, each like other. Like what you yeah. just said. I'm gonna yeah. say yeah. metaverse. I think this fuck. is an exponentially better pick than what you did. I I was that guy. You my, were a loud car guy? Well, so, you guys just completely shifted mine to me having surprised. a problem with people who have a car passion. It's people who call their car my baby was my pick. Well, okay. those people have a car passion. <laughs> that is fine. But I, this is great. I love this too. When That's I was point. 16, I my first car was a 92 Buick Century. Mm-hmm. And I was the up, one that got lit on fire? It is. Um, <laughs> it exploded like a fucking Michael Bay film. Uh, every year we would, prior to when they closed down, they're, they're not there anymore. We, my dad and, uh, his siblings, my aunts and uncles and shit, we'd go up to the Lake Delavan dog tracks and we would just gamble for a whole weekend. And they, on Sunday, we would watch a bears game in like this suite and, uh, gamble and all that shit. And this is, they didn't give a fuck if you were underage and gambling. I would just walk up to the teller and, and be like, I got the three horse or whatever. Um, my uncle, my two uncles and I, we hit a trifecta that paid 2,100 bucks. So we split it three ways, 700 bucks a pop. How old were you? I was 16. Um, oh, that's sick. It was, I thought I was a millionaire. It was the, like the most money I had ever seen. And I, I got a 12 inch shoves in this with a fucking sick amp installed from Best Buy in this car. And it was so loud. And I'm driving through the whitest most stereotypical suburban town with these subwoofers blasting at like like rocket ship decibel levels and looking back i was the biggest douchebag on the planet for that at least you were 16 though it's supposed to be in 26 doing that but that <laughs> it's, that it was a rough and i did you lose definitely those playing limp biscuit too <laughs> oh yeah limp biscuit uh, i loved the chronic so i would blast the chronic all the time like Anything I was like, I'm embarrassed telling this story, but it, it feels good getting that off my back. I never got the money back for the subwoofers, by the way, and I still give my buddy who blew up my car that shit, shit for that. He owes me 700 bucks for those. Do you know that story? No. My friend threw a firework in my car and the cloth <laughs> caught on fire and then the gas tank caught on fire and it exploded. <laughs> and the whole fire department had to come and they evacuated the block and... I was parked in front of the fire hydrant, so they had to use the reserve tank, and it was like <laughs> vehicular arson, and it was a big deal. We're playing a lot of the hits for White Sox. Yeah, Lakers, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh we're playing God. all the hits. We're playing a lot of the hits. Yeah, because we're talking about douchebag moves, and it's White Sox Dave's life history. <laughs> uh, this is the f- first one. I mean, I don't one. know what the kid's thinking throwing a firework in a car. Like, I don't know, what, just... what was his play there? to fuck with me and that was it he didn't obviously think he was starting it on fire he was just doing it to fuck with me uh he (laughs) got i mean he he got he actually the only thing he got was a firework possession ticket for like 75 bucks or whatever which isn't a big deal um but i could have charged him with vehicular arson which i kind of wish i did what a a good guy you are that's a good friend to keep him out of jail (laughs) with the year up um let me take a look here at the list oh yep Actually, was going to think about using this one earlier, but it's still around. So uh, everyone knows these people. And without sounding like I don't even maybe I shouldn't say this. I'm not even going to say what I was going to say, but everyone knows these people. And for some reason, they have it in their mind that this is the right thing to do. But when a plane touches down and lands and then the beep goes off that it's time to get up and get your belongings in the overhead depart- compartment. And these people who run up and try to get like five lanes ahead. Do you guys know who I'm talking yeah, about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's they should the be castrated. Insa- it's the most insane move. It's like, all right, I'm going to get from row 21 to row 16 in the split second that the light goes off. It's like that is a douchebag move that ends up causing like kind of a ruckus where the person who's was at 
row 16 can't get out because the dude from row 21's already ran up there to get off the plane a little quicker. And this doesn't include people who are running or trying to sprint to catch a connector. Yeah. It's just people who are like, I don't know. They have zero patience and zero respect for anyone. And when the plane lands, they decide to get as much room in the aisle as they can before everyone else gets out to get their get all their stuff. I mean, it it can't be like maybe 35 seconds. And like deboarding a plane can't be an easier process. Like you just go row by row. Right. You shouldn't get out of your seat until the row in front of you starts to get up. Then you can start to stretch a little bit. Get your, you know. Yeah. So everyone's seen the person I'm talking about, though. Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, that's been drafted crazy. in another draft. Yeah, that that's got to be a grievance. I think Dante I took it as a grievance. That's yeah. a huge grievance. Yeah. yeah, that's a huge grievance. It's uh, but th- those people are like, to me, those people are like, um, it's douchebagness because of the lack of awareness. Because it's like, where it's where are we societal going? Societal thing, yeah. But yeah. it's also like, uh, it's no respect. Yeah, it's yeah. scummy. I also just think it's like you're mentally kind of stupid. Because it's like you're not gaining that much. You're pissing everybody off. You're still going to be uncomfortable even when you're standing Inept. there. Just sit yeah. in your seat. Now, the yeah. only thing is if someone's got a connecting and they got to go to another yeah. gate and there was a little delay. And so there is probably one out of a couple people that are like, hey, I'm getting the fuck off this yeah. plane. I got to yeah. get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Witt said that. I, I yeah, mentioned, said that. Yeah. Okay. I, I mentioned that. And I think a lot of times if hmm. if you say that it's going down, like the flight attendants will almost kind of help you. You're right. The first one off. Um Unless you don't have your mask on correctly, then you're going to get fucking shot. <laughs> but I, I think that the person who runs quick to try to gain some gain some time and getting off a plane. Tough, tough on the board. Tough on the draft. Board, yeah, like that's I what said. I was going to say. A yeah. person who maybe you just show a guy like, yeah, I don't know how I don't know how Ken Jack's going to so do a person one. who jumps but line that, plane. Thing. Yeah, it's a of. common thing to bitch about on the Internet. So I'm sure you could just yeah. find person a who rushes to deboard. Yeah. 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 Person to rush to yeah. deboard the plane. There we go. Um, all right, Carl. Um, okay, this one's like, I don't know what we're going to call this one, but it's like the people who it's like they're routinely posting and talking about health and fitness on Facebook and like their own personal journey. And they're like crazy day to day, had to get up early and grind you know, going to school, still paying the debt, you know, but that doesn't stop me from doing meal prep. That doesn't stop me from fucking. You're talking about the rise and grind guy. Yeah, right. Yeah, Yeah. like rise and grind, (laughs) basically. Rise and grind guy. And, uh, and, but there's something about it on Facebook that just hits a little bit different because it's, it's like they're talking into the void to their cousins and people they went to high school with like 20 years ago. So posting about Jim on Facebook? What? I think you should just put no, in quotes. No, that's weak. Rise Fuck you. That's so fucking I think weak. Rise and grind, grind, rise and grind in quotes is. He you gave, they he gave let it to you. Know, know. Carl, they let you know that their diet's so good, that they're not, they haven't had a drink in a month, that their workouts are so hard. Yes, rise and grind guys sucks. And, that, it, and like it's like never thought I would ever get this way when I think about where I started, you know, and then it's like, uh, the, you know, I, I gave up alcohol. It gets very dark and deep and, and then always very positive. Yeah. Well, even like the, almost uh, goes to the Joe Burrow quote. Remember he's like, yeah, just work out. Don't post about all your work. Yeah. Out. Remember yeah. he said that before yep. the Super Bowl? Just like, shut up. Like if, if you're doing all the stuff, rising grind guy wants to remind everyone that he's doing, that's awesome. It's actually really good for you. You're living a healthy lifestyle. You're probably feeling better. Nobody needs to hear about it. Go on your merry way, doing your own shit, and don't remind us how cool you are. Yes. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I completely agree. And and it is like even that like the people who do it like are, that are s- super successful like Jocko Wilnick. If you guys know who that is, like the podcast yeah. like former I think he's a former Navy SEAL. Mm-hmm. Like great, you know, successful veteran, all that. Respect him. Like I don't, you don't need to post that you're up at four fifteen every day working out. Mm-hmm. Like no one, like no one cares. Is I'm not familiar with him. Is he trying to like inspire other people to? I think so. Or is yeah. he just showing off? Like, no, he's like he's. I think he does like motivational speaking and things uh, like that. And I he don't has think that. I mean, I'm sure. Four fifteen, just work out. All it's right. amazing how many people like the, the Tony Robbinses of the world. Like they, it That's proves how many people actually want to like be talked to like that and like actually listen to that shit. Like it's crazy the amount of money these people have. From just talking about what it takes to be successful. Is it not a no-brainer? Yeah, wake up early in the morning, work hard, get a workout in, eat well. It's it's You're like so people funny. spend so much money listening to these people talk about it. Dude, the people that go to Tony Robbins in person, 
Have you, do you know anybody who has? No. My buddy set me up with a lunch for what, with one of his buddies when I was back in sales. And he's like, you have to meet my friend Brian. He's a personal banker, and he just kills it. Like, you, you'll really just go meet this guy. We went to Dicka's. I got a pork chop. I go and I meet this guy. He, he was like, if you have $10,000 to your name, you need to spend it tomorrow to get down to see Tony Robbins at the end of that August in Orlando. The passion in which this guy spoke about the Tony Robinson was like, it'll, ch it'll change your entire fucking life. And he was telling me stories about how he used to be a drug dealer and all the shit. And then he went to the Tony Robbins thing and it just fucking out. And that's how those people who go to these things, like he, he's, I, there are people walking around being like, he saved me, which is, I don't know if it's insane, but it's, 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 well, it's good for those people. But I, for me, I see that. I'm like, oh my God, like. Did you not know everything he was saying to begin with? Did you get drafted in the first Quite round on talent or work ethic, you think? Talent and and possible uh what's the word what you can do in the future? Projectability? Yeah, you're 64. Yeah, but not even projectability. What's the actual oh potential? Potential. Yeah. I was drafted on potential. Upside. Never really lived up to it. Upside. Would do you, you do it? That's why the NHL the NHL drafts hard. They're 18. It's like a lot of the, there's a lot of can't miss guys, but it is a lot of projection and, and, and potential forecasting. Do you? Yes. Do you hit the gym now? As like a father and like, no, it's so bad, dude. I'm I'm so I'm the heaviest I've ever been. I'm the most out of ankles. shape. I eat like shit. I mean, I try to like I try to do stuff, but it's not good. It's not I need to get and it's so it's so hard to get back into the rhythm when you've been eating like trash and never exercising, it's hard to start doing it. And then once you start doing it, you can continue it. You yeah. get that routine, but to get back in, it's difficult. And then even when you're in it, it's way easier to just get out of it. So it's a grind, man. Mm -hmm. when you Did retire. I told one of my buddies when I retired, I was going to still work it out, work out with the guy who, who trained me as in the summers and the off seasons when I played. And I haven't seen this guy in seven years when I retired. <laughs> so the, so the, like, body, the body I, by I, Brian I guy. Uh, no, it's not. It's not bought Mike Boyle, body by boy. I, I went to another Boyle, guy yeah. at, the, the, at the end. Um, but you know, having kids and like obviously our jaw, it's just it's it's not good though. I need to get back into it. Sounds Did like you, you need Tony Robbins. <laughs> yeah, right. That'll be me. I'm going down. I'm actually just. I was trying to really persuade you guys from realizing that I am going to the next. <laughs> That's why he's in Florida. Yeah, I know these uh, are uh, <laughs> always kind of inaccurate, but assuming it's within a hundred or two million, it says Tony Robbins is worth 600 mil. Holy Jesus. So, no, I would be the biggest shit. douchebag on yeah. the wow. planet. If I was that wealthy, I wouldn't give a fuck. Wow. Wait, did you like working out? I loved it. Oh, when you I did. Was like, yeah. I, when I was still playing in the summers, cause it was, you know, me and four buddies who all played. And then like, you'd go play golf after, but for two hours, you, you, would you'd feel so good after it that it made me, I mean, I didn't enjoy the actual like act of working out, but how I felt after is what I really like. That's kind of what I miss. Okay. It's just feeling like it's a natural like high. Sweat. Yeah. Like sweating Fuck makes yeah. you just like, I don't know, happier. All yeah. right, Carl, your uh, last pick. Um, there's a lot of picks on the board. I could go a couple different ways with like, uh, like this guy doing this move and all that stuff, but I just can't, I mean, I think, um, I don't know how to say this, but it's like uh, you're in the playpen. You know, you're on a boat or something, and it's like a nice, peaceful day. The playpen's at Lake Michigan area where you go out recreationally, and then all of a sudden you just see some fucking guy come by at like 60 miles an hour on a jet ski. And then no wake zone. I can't see somebody on a jet ski without instantly just being like, you are a fucking douche. Have you ever been on a jet ski? No, I know they're awesome. They're not so fucking awesome. I know. I know. I know how cool jet skis are, and I'm sure Eddie's fucking Camaro's awesome and all this stuff that – but it's just like – you just see the jet skis come by, and it's some, like, 40-year-old guy in the fucking... Now, hold on. Let me ask you. Are they, like... Because those are all anchored boats, and they're just chilling, and you're not supposed to have a wake. Are these guys, like, flying through and causing waves for people? Uh, you'll see people that they come just... in and, like, be aggressive, but it's more, like, a little bit on the outskirts. Oh, like that's not a douchebag move. Those guys are no, just no, having fun. No, no, no. There is nothing wrong with that. I'm 100% talking about jet ski culture and, like, just, so just being a big jet ski you're, guy. You're thinking, like, Kenny Powers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, like, I got to fucking... This thing's ready to go, taking it to the lake, got it fucking serviced. Like, it's... Get it's down, a, Blind Ambition Tour. <laughs> 
It's a little bit like Ed's car <laughs> thing, but it's more about the guys that just like really love a good jet ski. Like to so me, that's like, they, got, they got they got white white Oakleys on, Carl. Yeah, uh, they got the white sunglasses, <laughs> tough bathing suit. Yeah, like they have the suit for saying. the jet ski. They're, everything is about. So it's not just riding a jet ski. <laughs> How do you riding want me to put it? Uh, being a jet ski guy. <laughs> okay. Jet ski if guy. I had, I, a, I took a jet ski once, and I I was shocked at like after thirty minutes, it's kind of like all right. Like I, it was fun, but I yeah. I don't know. Got to, like if I owned a jet ski, big, I don't know if I'm gonna use that that often. Like the first time I did it, there was the original rush, and then I was just like, okay, I'm I'm over this. I think sense. that's how I, boats yeah. in general. I've done it are. twice in my life. I had a good time. There once. Yeah, my grandparents had one, so I've done it a shit ton, and I loved it. Fucking, it was so much, <laughs> so much fucking fun. Uh, but I would do it like once a year. Do so you get that, where I'm coming from? At least, please, anybody. Nobody. I I I do. Thank you, I do. Me. I think mm-hmm. you could have. We'll talk about it after, but I think you could have changed it a little bit to hit a home run with it. Being a jet ski guy, uh, Whitney, you're up. Before I give my last pick, can we at the end just list off some um, what uh, mentions? honorable mentions? We yeah, we always do that. Yeah, like because yeah. I think like because I, I think that could end up winning the draft for me because I have a lot left. So I, I, I making this final picks hard, but I'm gonna go with. The guy who is uh, has a friend that's nice enough to lend him his car and whether it's a truck, you know, you got to move something or you just needed a car and, you know, you're allowed from your friend to use his and you return it on empty. That's uh, what <laughs> the guy who just give him the crown filled the tank up after borrowing somebody's car. Not only should you return yes, the tank no. full. Like, Chief's done this for me. He's borrowed my car. He's returned it full, and I'll get a can of dip from it. Like, I think that makes you a piece of shit. Like, I think that, I think that makes you an I, awful I have all scumbag piece of shit fucking dick. I know. Douchebag, though. That's part of the... I have all, all my stuff basically just absolute asshole piece of shit moves. But I but, guess the process in which the guy gives the car back, if he's like, dude, it's not my fucking fault. Like, it's, you know, the car... Yeah. like. That yeah, you can be a huge douchebag in that. No, I think if you're borrowing a car, it's, you have to. I think you have to do more than just. Fill That's it what I'm up. saying. Yeah, yeah you've so, always given me right. a couple cans of dip. Get right. a car wash or something. Yeah, something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Minimum, minimum though. Fill the fill the tank. minimum. Yeah. yeah. If you don't fill the tank, like that's, that's like that's taking money from you're a jack yeah. off it. And you, gas ain't cheap right now. What about someone who takes someone's car and gets them a ticket? <laughs> And then doesn't even tell them, so they get it in the mail. Hey, yeah. Whitney, who who in this room did that to somebody? Oh, that's wow. One of you guys borrowed a car, got a ticket, and didn't tell the person. I'm no, I told him, Dave. No, no I, I told him. Oh, I did it. it I, I borrowed Dave's car. Oh, wow, dude, you're kind of a man of honor, man of integrity. I didn't see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I told him. It was it was uh, it was a bad day. <laughs> that, that was a but bad I know day. Danny has that fight with you about when you parked his car in like a like a no parking zone. He it, said no, toe didn't zone. park it in toe no. zone. Yeah, I, I got towed. So there are the signs that say like you can't park from here to the corner because you're like parking in the intersection, basically on side streets, you know. And the car was this much over the over the thing, like this much a foot over the thing. No meter made on the planet is going to give you a ticket for that. And if they would have, I would have gladly paid for it. I knew what I was doing. I wasn't intentionally parking in a no parking spot. It was completely. But you got, com- did he get towed? No, he didn't no. get towed. No ticket, no nothing. I knew oh, that. Oh, then he, he has no complaint. Then he has no complaint. Yeah, and he made a big deal out of it. it. Was blasting on social media as if like I like just threw his car there, and that's not what happened. It was marginally over the line, and I knew that nothing was going to happen. And if in the off chance something did happen, I would have gladly, gladly paid the ticket for him hmm. and bought him lunch or something. Chief, you're up. I'm going to go with the gym one. And again, something I haven't seen in probably three or four years. But the guy who yells in the gym. Yeah. The guy, the, the gym yeller when he's like repping out and he's like screaming, letting everybody know that he's like Max and he's getting that last rep in. He has to can't do it unless he shakes the walls by screaming. The gym yeller guy is the fucking worst. That guy shouldn't be in a public gym. He should <laughs> yeah. be in like a private gym with like a personal trainer where there's other like minded people now, doing that. I'll I'll say that like when I took tribal and you guys are like, well, if it's sweet and the guy can like pull it off or whatever. Like, I think if you're in the gym and someone's like really throwing weight around, I mean, you you know, like three, four plates on the bench or something. And they're they're like very impressive physically and they're like grunting and stuff. 
it is douchey, but there isn't any part of me that cannot admit that, like, yeah, it's a little scary. It's, it's also it's part of the scary. experience. Like, it's part of the experience. It wouldn't be a gym if there wasn't a bunch yeah. of fucking... Yeah, but, you, you know, know, like, there's chalk in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Shitty like, music, like, you know... Guys carrying a duffel on, bag, the weightlifting gloves, that's a douchebag move. Uh, yeah. 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 Or Those the big rawhide real. belt over, like, yep. the, the <laughs> Stabilizer, gotta stabilize. Can't throw your back out when you're doing squats. I wore those in college. Yeah, so, I mean, and they've got the fucking wrist wraps. Like, those are douchebags, but it again, it's like... Yeah. There is an element of like that guy's fucking scary. Like Jesus, yeah. dude. If yeah. you're doing that constantly throughout like a hour weightlifting session, then you're a fucking asshole or you're a douchebag. But if you do it, if you're like you're building up to your max and you're maxing and you're grunting and being loud for like a couple of seconds, I don't mind it. The other thing with that though, just be a little bit fatter. You know what are you trying to prove? That too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I that was one one of the reasons why I asked you if you like working out with like try I, when I was done playing any sports or being I'm like I'm not lifting weights ever again. Like I fucking hate lifting weights. I'm not doing it. So like, these guys are like you know if they're like my age they're 35 and they're like maxing out and screaming and while they're pumping, ah, you're a douchebag. Just be fat. They probably went to Tony. They probably went to Tony Robbins. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm also I'm also married. So it's like, what is the point of like being in unreal shape? But yep. then now like we're on camera with chicklets. So I'm like, oh fuck! Like I wouldn't I wouldn't even be considering the stuff I'm talking about trying to do again if I wasn't constantly seeing myself look a little bigger every time we have a new video come out. It's the worst. That is bad. So yelling in the gym. Yeah. Your pick. Um. M Grunting, moaning, yelling? I would say it's a yeller. A yeller. If you're lifting and you're A grunt grunting. is like a... Ugh. Yeah. But if you're like... Oh, yeah, dear. that's fine. Keep it to yourself. Yeah. What was it, dude? Just like, you know... Yeah. That's what he did. Uh, all right, it's to me. I, so this has been a heavy theme of like the macho, like fucking... You know, gym douche guy, douchebag kind of thing. I'm going with like, like I said earlier, like a different kind of douchebag. I don't know if they had these in Boston, Whitney, but if you guys have ever been to Wicker Park or somewhere like that, those people who ride those fucking tall ass bikes and you wonder uh, how the fuck they got on them. The old timey bikes. Dude, they're like fucking six feet tall. I don't know how they do it. Like taller, way taller. Yes. Than you know what I mean? feet tall. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think I've ever seen uh, one in the wild. No, I've, I've seen them, see them all the time. Yeah, not all the time. I mean, I see them a good I don't bit. I yeah. know what you're talking about. That's what I'm saying. Know. Look up. So look it's up. It's like uh, a carnival. So Google thing, Google basically. tall bike, and it's the Wikipedia page, and it's a home constructed I bike. I Google tall bike, and it just says Dave will never be on one of these. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's the most like it's not it's not for tall people. It's, it's just it's not practical. I don't understand why oh, people do this. You're what the fuck? Yes, dude. I've seen. I, I, I was all, throughout my whole life I've seen people ride this and it is the quintessential every time you see you just shake your head it's like what a douchebag like why are they why are they doing this to themselves so riding these fucking souped up tall bicycles is like the epitome of a like this guy like come on bro this guy in a douchebag yeah I'm looking no, I mean exactly see this about. is where he's got s yeah. Zero effect on anything I'm but doing, he's a so I don't care. It's a douchebag move That's, to ride a bike. How do you how do you get off that thing? That's I what think I'm you gotta saying. Like tip dude. over and like catch what? yourself. That's what I don't I'm know. saying. It's like I don't know how you get off. You like push yourself up against like a brick wall and Maybe. You jump off. I don't know. But I've seen these people my whole life, and I'm like, what? So what the a douchey bag. part about it is you don't know how they get off. Well, that's like it, practicality. It's, it's like, like another like, look at me thing. We'll just ride it's a, a normal thousand size percent bike. What it is? Yeah. Why, why are you doing that? What is the reason for these tall bikes? There's no reason. I I <laughs> I feel like when you look at like old timey like pictures and shit, like that was like the only bike. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I know, know what you're talking about. Like, yeah. like the giant different front size wheels. wheels. Well, that yeah. was like yeah. the first iteration, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Whoever invented the bike really struck out on that one. Look at this fucking guy, dude. Yeah, well, see that I don't. You've never seen one of those? I actually now that I have. yeah, it's crazy. Like, that was actually. Have you never seen one, Whitney? Um, I maybe I maybe I have, but I can't like think of a time or a place where I see it quite often. I but, would say. But, I mean, looking at these pictures, it's ridiculous. Through a standard summer in Chicago, you'll see him a small handful of times, and but like this is back to live, let live, like. He, it's like, all right, that's kind of weird, but like, I don't care. Yeah, but it's the you, same. If you like it, go, go for it. That's the same as like a gym out. guy. Let, live, let live. They want to yell at the gym. It's like I've, every time I but see But that's I'm affecting like, me a, because it's like it's, it's getting thing. in my head. I don't know. So that's my pick. People who you ride those tall the, bikes. Uh, you ever seen the naked ride in Chicago? Yeah, no, I, seen the I never have. Yeah. 
I was like, it's never any of the naked people you want to see. No, naked. one, one, one time, one girl was. <laughs> How was it? Spectacular. Um, wait, wait, hold on. We can't just. This is there. like yeah, probably yeah, three or four years ago, but it was like I was at, um, was at that rooftop hotel Lincoln. What's yeah, the yeah, name yeah. Of that? And Jay like, Parker. Jay Parker came downstairs, and I was like in the naked bike ride. And you and saw was, a girl you liked. I saw one girl I liked, and like probably four hundred like dicks run around <laughs> like that but there were that was the only time i think i've seen a tall bike in the wild there were like tall bikes on the naked ride keep your eye out bro especially in wicker like that's like i mean a, i walk to wicker all the spot. time with the dog so it's i a just prime spot yeah. you wanted that one i did because like i said like i just every time i see them like what's the fucking point like why i just shake my head what a douche um white tax day mr relevant I can't believe it didn't get picked at, at some point, but just a guy or the person who shows off about how much – it's always a guy. It shows off about how much money they make. Like some finance asshole is like, oh, yeah, I closed this $500,000 deal. Not, I got 10%. Like I, that's, I, I'm, that's I a lot of so. 50 I, – I've pretty much made a career and a podcast out of doing this. No, I <laughs> yeah, – like, like, it's not a guy. Get, like, what's you, you do it. How how like, no, how bragging mean, about how much money – Yeah, bragging, bragging about how, being rich. Bragging about how much money you make. Or how, how many how many sheets wit? I made like twenty nine, but I know <laughs> I do I do make jokes, and I would never like be in a conversation with people like saying shit like that. Right. But I have, I, there, but people could pull off a hundred chiclet steaks of me doing it. But I know exactly what you're saying, and I actually was like, I hope this doesn't get picked. So I'm gonna have to address it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just the douchiest. It's like yeah, I you know I I make one point two a year in corporate finance. It's like oh, I do not give a fuck. Like, I don't care. Like, stop talking yep. about money right now. Like, I, I understand. Like, you talk about it intentionally. If you if your intention is to be a douchebag, then I think it it plays. It negates the douchebag yeah. move. Like, with me running the right away, stealing right aways from people. Like, I know what I'm doing. I'm intentionally being a douchebag. Or, or, if you're a douchebag, you don't realize you're being a douchebag. Or even how you talk about running the marathon. Oh yeah, like that, I was gonna. That was like gonna be my honorable mention, like twenty six point two stickers <laughs> yeah. on cars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I, they I, they I, I had one on my car for a week until I realized I'm like, all right, it's ran its course. But and you did it for the joke. I did it for the joke. So like yeah. lean into being a douchebag. <laughs> yeah. Let me uh, read them through, and then we'll do honorable mentions. We'll get out of here. Uh, Carl tribal tattoo, taking a shirt off at bar, joining a frat, posting a rising grind on Facebook, being a jet ski guy. Whitney, uh, not picking up dog shit, people who take two parking spots, people who talk during movies, person who rushes to deboard plane, guy who doesn't fill gas tank after borrowing car, uh, chief bad tippers, people who don't watch TV, picking a fight at the bar, people who with a loud car yelling in the gym, Eddie treating restaurant workers like shit, intentionally shoulder bumping someone, uh, constantly talking about your kills, killing your, calling your car my baby, people who ride those tall bikes. White Sox Dave, do you know who my dad is? Uh, not father, using, it's got to be father. Father, okay. Not using directional while driving. Not spraying down machine at gym. Snitch tagging on Twitter. Bragging about how much you make. It's right. a solid draft. Yeah. That's 25, or yeah, 25 legit douchebag moves. Name no. droppers. We didn't do honorable mention. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that was father. Name droppers got that. Um, what about this one? Um, driving slow in the passing lane, mm. driving slow in the left lane, going yeah, like bad. you know if the speed limit's yeah. speed limit sixty in Massachusetts, you're going fifty eight. It's like getting the getting the right lane. Yeah, but I think fucking doing one ten is a bigger douchebag move than doing like fi doing slow. That's like, true. I, like I think a douchebag's like Both fucking sides, yeah. boom boom boom. I don't give a fuck. I know, but like, and they're causing more danger, but it's like, you can cause some serious, I think traffic basically begins with people going like yeah. 60 in the passing lane. You know what I think is a big douchebag driving move is you ever, you know, there's like a, say there's a long line in the left turn lane and the fucking asshole, he completely bypasses the lane and comes from the other side and cuts off the turn lane in front of them. That's a fucking dickhead. Oh, move. I don't know if I've ever experienced, I would never lose seen my that? fucking mind. No, I, I noticed this in Arizona because I lived out in Arizona for like, almost two months, a few years back, when you're taking a left at a green light in an intersection and people don't sneak out to the middle of the intersection, allowing more, 
Oh, that's they a, don't do that in Arizona, and it drives nobody, me insane. Saying, nobody no, did. they don't. It's not part of their cult. And then they won't like, go. They then they won't even go when the when it turns orange. It's like, how the fuck aren't you? It's, it's not causing traffic. It's not putting anybody else in danger. It's like, why aren't you sneaking out to the middle of the intersection so more cars can clear? It drives me crazy. I littering. I was I, but yeah, li- that's littering a, out of your car. That is, yeah, that's, that's, bad. A, that's bad. That could have been a first round pick, I think. I just, but yeah, Wit took kind of some iteration of littering. I didn't think it would be that, like. Whitney, what else you got? If you throw, um, like, a bag I got, of McDonald's um, out of a car, Whitney, uh, you're a fucking The people who, douchebag. when the light turns green, if you don't go immediately, they lay on the horn. Like, mm-hmm. Jesus, dude. Taxi can you give driver, me one yeah. second here? It just turned green. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to give my kids some Cheerios. <laughs> Fuck those people. I got, um, I got, um, r- the roommate. When you got a roommate and he never cleans, he's never helping out cleaning. That's a douchebag move. Mm-hmm. I've dealt with those people before. Name names. Who are we talking about? Uh, I'm not gonna call my buddy out because he knows. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna let that one be. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, not letting a person. If you're at the grocery store and you got like, you know, say you got 50 things and you see somebody with like three or four, not letting them go in front of you. That's which a good happens, one. That's a which good one. Happens. The dirt bag that's com- that's courtesy. Yeah. And then um, the one other here. Oh, and then talking on a speak talking on the speakerphone in public. Yeah. You guys Ooh. see it's Can't like do a it. new age yeah. thing. Yeah, FaceTime in public too. Yeah. Face same thing, same yeah, exact like thing the... where it's like the other person's so loud. You're like, why am I listening to who this person's talking to? Like it's bad enough when somebody's loudly on the phone. Let alone you're hearing like what their person that they're talking to is saying. So that 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 was on my list as mm-hmm. well. That's good. Yeah, I just have uh, I, just calling someone a beta like not like unironically is like you know pretty douchey. Yep. So he's such a beta. Yeah. Um, yep. Idolizing Dan Bilzerian. Oh, uh, good he's man. Why didn't you take that uh, in the first round? You're over here talking about that's a great one because those ones that I took were personal one. to me that I just like ah oh, these, these irk me. I I still I tall bikes. Man, I'm, that's, that's, I mean, you had yeah, idolizing Dan Bilzerian in one hand, and you had tall bikes in the other. And you I wanted tall diversity bikes. on my this board. Crazy uh, people who have idolizing quotes. Bikes. People who have constantly quotes about lions on their Instagram. Lions. You know, they're on their uh, or on their lions own. aren't concerned yeah, with the yeah, yeah, sheep. Yeah, you know I, I mean? feel like Dan Bilzerian would post or that. like Twitter or Facebook. Or <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But Dan Bilzerian, he got a lot of buddies. That that lives that? kind of a sweet life. No, I, I no, but like. Oh, super fucking Showing up to a party empty handed. Yeah. That's just like you weren't raised right. Drinking drinking somebody's booze, like all the booze, you know, it's like, what are you doing? mm, Two big ones were uh, when you go and you study abroad and then you come back and you're like, you have to go to Portugal. You know, and it's like and the people. There's like 22 year olds walking around me, like yeah. you haven't, you haven't, you haven't been in Lisbon. Oh my god, like the sunrise. Hey, want to see something crazy? <laughs> I just looked left in this rental house office. <laughs> yeah, it's, dude, line, like that. it's, like, it's like a bangle. You see what I'm saying? It's a monster like. picture of a lion. Yeah. Just oh, put that in your home sucks. gym. Yeah. yeah. See. Shit like that. The guy that never leaves high school. That's what I. I the other one was yeah. glory days. Yeah, I'm over here. You could fucking look at me. I had a good time. Calling people boss. How about talk? How about the guy who gets if you his can first play it job? Off, it's good though, and all he does is talk, talk about his boss. You guys meet up for drinks. You know, you just been working for like two months. It's like, dude, my boss is like the funniest guy. He's the coolest guy. My <laughs> boss is so good. Um, Going off what Ed just said. Hey, asking somebody how much money they paid for something. Mm. Ed kinda was tiptoeing like, around that with yeah. me recently. He started a conversation, and immediately I'm like. He's like, "What's up, Dave?" I'm like, "You don't want to know what's up with me. <laughs> like, you need something." And I'm like, "What's up?" He's like, "Nothing. How you been? Good. I'm done. Why?" And eventually oh he got to the question. He was like, "How much money did you pay for that?" I did not bought? say that. That if I want hey that's public guys, record. I love you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go. I yep. gotta go. I love you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Wit. It's all good. Yeah, Thank you. Guys. Adios, Wit. You oh, little hey fucking douchebag. <laughs> Are you all taking right. the polygraph down there? I, I want to. You're gonna pop. Well, he's only had the dog a month. He will run into that situation. You, everybody who has ever had a dog, especially in the city, yeah, has been in that situation before. Yeah, we agreed, Eddie. What the? Uh, no, it's just. No, nah, I'm. Hold on. That was a good. Uh, that I was thought good, that was thorough balance. All I, I said was, did you close in your place yet? Twenty third, but I'm down the home stretch with everything. I said that's good. Why? What's up? I said just wondering. 
which one was it again? And he gave the address. I go, oh, that's the one by this restaurant. He said, yeah, why are you being coy? I said, I'm not at all. <laughs> Just haven't seen you and was curious. I also have a question about, you know, everything, that, you know, how like the process works because I'm starting to look at my own. That's all I said. Just trying to I, I need understand. some advice from I, a friend. No, I don't. That's, I'm, that's I'm, like. You I'm, were really looking for his perspective on well, the house yeah, buying experience? Yeah, like what and was no, that? going to shape your opinion? I'm, I'm busting Ed's balls. But, mm -hmm. but I had, to, I had to look out for myself here. Well, I think Dave's he covered spot his tracks. On. He's like, I'm about to ask a personal question. I'm like, dude, there's really not too much that I won't delve into. Like, nothing's really that personal with me. Like, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was just, I'm just busting his balls. You were uh, spot on by saying that Ed, you had your, you had your fucking, the sniff test out when Eddie was asking you one question because he loves to zig and zag. Actually, you know what? I think you just went out and straight up asked. Me. I did. <laughs> chief, it was cheap. Yeah. Under the bus. He see? just, he's like, hey, how much you pay for your <laughs> and house? I got thrown under the bus. No, but like Dave, like I he known knows you, me. Yeah, yeah he, like, I, like I, I don't I, care. You're probably one of the only people in the world that I would feel comfortable asking that. Right. I, yeah. I, I don't care. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. and I knew you wouldn't care. All right, Don. Thanks to Wit. He had a run uh thanks everybody for listening that's it for today douchebag moves we'll see you all tomorrow